people out there and welcome back to Fat Lads Going Goal. We're back, just like we said we'd be back, and I'm your host and fat lad with a god complex, Mark Watson. Now, Christy Pugh isn't with us today. He's probably smashed on a massive magnum of champagne somewhere. But I'm here with the main man, Dan Ivory, for Meeting with the Mayor, Part 8. Dan, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much happier are you now than when you were in Meeting with the Mayor, Part 1? Uh, about a thousand percent happier. <laughs> It's unreal, isn't it? It's a different world. Um, it's a, a weird time to be a, be a Blues fan. Um, I'm still, despite better knowledge, still kind of waiting for the wheels to fall off, mate. Yeah, I kind of get that. You know, it's like good things don't happen to uh, to us, do they? No. But um, yeah, um, I c- I just still can't believe Tom Wagner wrapped up, to, uh, um, uh, rocked on up to Bainsies and dropped a gram behind the bar, like. And and then led the chorus to keep right on, like yeah. fair, you know. Um, Curry afterwards as well. Guy, guy, guy knows how to do it. Blue style. Has he sang shit on the villa yet? No, but I'm sure we can work on that. Tom, if you're watching this, time's ticking, mate. Come on. If we can get a video of that up by the weekend, I'll be the happiest man in Birmingham. Um, so, I mean, where 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 just start? Should we start with the day itself? How did you find out? I mean, I suppose we shouldn't have to go over the news because anyone watching this should know the news, but Blues are imminently going to be bought out by Tom Wagner and the Nighthead. Uh, is it Nighthead Group? Nighthead Limited? Uh, um, just go with Shel- Sh- uh, Shelby Companies Limited. Shelby that- Companies Limited. Um, yeah. We've obviously... The BSHL have agreed to sell. There is a, a, great, uh, a deal in principle. Is that what they call it, Dan? Um, so do you want my analogy, my transfer analogy? Definitely. So I th- I, I've been thinking about this. So imagine uh, we're loaning to buy a player from America. Yes. We, we've spoken to his club. We've agreed, you know, how much loan fee we're going to pay, how much the wage we're going to pay. We've spoken to the player. And, you know, he's like, yeah, I'll come play for you. That sounds good. Um, so all of that bit's done. All we're waiting for now is for the FA to do the uh, international clearance, to pass the medical, and do all the, you know, the all sign all on the dotted line. Mm. That's it. And yeah, you know, it could fall apart because, you know, medicals are medicals and international clearance can take time. Work permits can be an arsehole, but you expect it all to go through. And this is exactly the same. We've, um, Shelby have agreed a deal with BSHL, with Oriental Rainbow Investments. They've all the terms are sorted, all that's done. Just needs the EFL to go, yeah, all right then. The stuff he shows to go, yeah, all right then. And shareholders to go, yeah, all right then. And the best news is, is the shareholders have already agreed to go, yeah, all right then. So we're almost there. Almost there. So you wrote one of the longest pieces I've ever read on net the other night, um, where you basically dissected the the whole deal and the, 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 um, the clauses and whatnot. If anyone hasn't read that, I strongly recommend you go go and read it. If you find that you do get bogged down with like contract stuff and money stuff and clause stuff, I understood it. And if I understood it, you will understand it. So go to almagia.net and have a, have a read of that for a bit more clarity. But that being said, we're going to go through it all um, all today. So in, in that piece, you said this deal... Um, in terms of the shareholder agreement, is kind of watertight. They can't back out now. Is that no, correct? And what do you mean by that? So, as I said, it's like you agree. You agree to transfer. Um, all the terms are agreed. Um, they've all. Been, if you remember the last announcement, it said like um, we, we, we've agreed a letter of intent. It's non-binding. We need definitive agreements. These are the definitive agreements. These will not change. These are the hold. Uh, the cold fast way it's going to be done and to put it into uh, simple terms Knighthead have screwed um, BSHL to the floor with it um, they've gone out, they've got really expensive lawyers, they've they've spent time and effort putting it together and the consequences of the deal which is really good for the buyer, which is a stark contrast to the one that I'd heard Richardson had agreed with um, Oriental Rainbow Investments, which was very seller friendly. Mm. So this is good. I always said that you have to be in a position where you can dictate terms mm. because otherwise they'll wriggle out of it. And that's exactly where Shelby Companies Limited were. 
they're in a position to dictate terms to say we're doing it this way um we'll give you a little bit of a carrot you know if you if you do it on time and all that but if you don't we will hit you so hard with the stick you won't know what day of the week it is so it explains me the whole um so so in in your piece you said uh von peck isn't allowed a vote um, no no but, but the other shareholders have agreed to it is th- when you say they've agreed to it, is it them going, yeah, yeah, we'll do it? Or is it them signing on the dotted line, this is agreed so, in advance? So, Long Pep's not allowed to vote because he's got a financial interest in the deal because of Oriental Rainbow Investments. Yeah. Um, TTA, Dragon Villa, two of the big shareholders, have signed irrevocable undertakings that they will approve any and all resolutions What's, regarding this matter. What happens if they don't? Um, I don't actually know. I don't think they. Uh, I think maybe they get taken out the street and hung upside down, <laughs> covered in jam and left for the wasps. So I'm not sure. We so they can't. can't. They can't. You know, it, it's basically we are. You know, I, I think it's as good as the paperwork's already signed for it and already handed in. You know, we, there's nothing that can be done. They've agreed, and because um, if you t- so if you take out Vong Peck. Is twenty three percent of Birmingham Sports Holdings at least what seventy seven, mm. and of that seventy seven percent, forty five is owned by TTA and Dragon Villa, which makes it mathematically impossible for the shareholders to say no. Even if that, I don't think they would anyway, but it's now mathematically impossible to do so. Right. Okay. So obviously, as with always with these, we've had a million and one questions from people. Um, various topics but i really want to screw down on this whole put your pessimism aside thing because i am the most pessimistic blues fan out there and i want you to convince me and everyone listening to this that this is the real deal so we had a question from uh colin farmer on twitter dan says a deal needs hong kong stock exchange approval can a stock stock market stop a deal what approval is needed so how does the whole you say we need the efl to agree it and the stock exchange to agree it What's the stock yes. exchange's interest in this? Um, the stock market can very much say no uh, because it's a listed company on the stock exchange. If you're listed on the stock exchange, you obey their rules, and their rules include buying and selling companies, uh, parts of yourself. So, yes, they can say no. Um, the Why central would thing they with, say no? The, the only reason I can think of that they would say no is, is that the deal would leave BSH in such a place that they, the company was not big enough to be on the stock exchange anymore. This is why they can't do the whole lot at once. This is why it's constructed in the way it's done. It's also why there is nothing in this announcement about the rest of it. It's a case of this is where it gets delicate because mm-hmm. what this deal has to do is it has to satisfy BFL. Yeah, BSH won't be in control. Uh, Shelby will be in complete financial control. They'll be running it. They'll be making all the decisions. But it also has to satisfy the stock exchange, uh, BSH still own fifty one percent. I still been uh, still a big enough company to be on the listing. So, to sound sorry to cut you off, to sound particularly naive, why do the stock exchange care if BSH will keep the listing? Uh, wh- why because, aren't they? Why don't they just go? Well, you sold the club. There goes your listing. Why does it affect it does, them? Why does it affect them? Because yeah. the rule, it's the rules, isn't it? You have to have rules to have a listing. No, I, I get that. And, I get that. But why do why do the stock exchange care if BSH have a listing? Why do they Why do they care? Because yeah. the listings on the stock exchange. The listings. The listing is part of them. If if it, if they don't care if they have a listing or not, they care that they obey the rules. Yeah. So it's like if you don't obey the rules, we're going to kick you off. It's it's that kind of. That's what I mean by like. It's not. Oh, you can't have a listening site. No, I, either you know you're a big enough company and you stay on, or you don't obey the rules and we'll kick you off mm. eventually. Legal things being what they are, so it is it is a very very delicate balancing act to satisfy both. And this is why you need really really good lawyers because to be able to do that balancing act, um, you need to be able to satisfy the BFL that no, the BSH can't interfere can't take any money out you can't have another mr king situation and can you imagine the afl approve this deal and there's some bullshit clause and we have a, a mr king uh, situation again mm. 
it's just that would be ridiculous. So they, you know, they've got to be strict on this. Equally, the stock exchange are looking at all the other like companies on the stock exchange who also have to obey the rules and also have to be a certain size. And they know that if they let BSH go through without obeying those rules, every single other one of those companies is going to be like, well, if they can do it, so can we. Right, I'm with you. That's, that, that's why you've got to have the rules. You know, if you don't have rules, then it's just anarchy. And as much as I'm up for a bit of anarchy sometimes, it's <laughs> not going to work in this situation. So who who is the bigger hurdle for this? Is it the AFL or is it Stock Exchange? I believe the stock exchange. I think the EFL are probably quite happy with it because the EFL want to see the back of BSH. Mm. They want to see the back of Birmingham Sports Holdings. They want to see the back of Mr. King. I'm fairly sure they've looked at Knighthead. They've looked at Dale. They've looked at the people they've got who are involved and going, yeah, these guys look fine. <laughs> these guys look like they know what they're doing. They've got, and also it, the other thing the EFL look for is like, have they got the money? Oh, look, they've said in the announcement that uh, they've put 50 million aside for operating costs and they lose 25 million a year. Oh, they have got two years worth of money. That will do. That will do nicely. So it, it is down to the stock exchange. And I'm, I would think this is part of the current stick thing. BSH have as much admitted they need to do this to keep going. So it's the only is on them to not fuck it up now because mm. they actually need the money. Um, so what, what, not, what do you think their, their plan is with that money? Buy another company to stick on the stock exchange to eventually replace... Yeah, buy, buy another company as part of the group and maybe change the name of the group and then like sell the rest of booze and fuck off and never bother us ever again. I don't care what they do after that. Like, you know, they could buy anything for all I give a shit. And I, it's, it, likewise, Mr. King, uh, once blues are out, I don't care what, what he does. You know, if he wants to get another, 50, another 15 passports, wants to like have another 20 kids, then that's fine by me. I no longer care. Buy the baggies. Oof. <laughs> no, there's a there's a team in trouble. I, I did actually have a question about the baggies, but <laughs> I'm not sure that will go on a Blues podcast by Blues fans. Um, but yeah, I, I think you said last time the fact they're not on the stock exchange makes it actually worse for them. Yeah, it does, and the fact that it's provable that their owner has taken money out and not given it back when he should have done, mm. like it's ridiculous. They are in they're, they're in deep shit because they're not going up because mm. no parachute money next year huge wages going to make massive uh, massive savings and some of the big players no one's going to want them because they're shit no yeah. carlin grant 15 million quid they got mugged up mm. Good so yeah it's going to be yeah well <laughs> it, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what happens I, I, i've seen a few Albion fans being a bit bullish oh yeah we'll get some freeze and all that but it's like yeah, yeah. Well, we've been doing that for years like well it ain't that easy yeah with um with the whole Mr King thing, question from Peter Twos at Twos in Nine on Twitter: Are we likely to hear from the EFL regarding the Mr King investigation, or will this be brushed under the carpet once the takeover is completed? We will hear about it. Um, it's still, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, they haven't uh, produced the charges yet, but I know why, and it's it comes down to legal shit. Um, before they produce the charges, obviously they're going to have they're going to have written to the people involved and said like. What, what what you know what what you're saying and from what i know uh they wrote to lacey tong who's this guy who's supposed to own the dragon villa shares and i believe he's come back along the lines of yeah i bloody own them yeah i bloody own them don't know who this mr king fella is and if you keep saying it i'm going to take you to court for defamation blah 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 bloody to which the afl which the afl will reply go on then <laughs> there you are. because the it, it's a bluff isn't it it's like it's what people it's it's especially in in chinese culture it's it's like I, i've seen it with bshl i've seen it with people connected to bshl they threaten legal action because it scares people mm. but if people are strong enough to stand and go go on then like um a couple of years ago uh, when lee bowyer took over at blues um i wrote a piece because i'd heard from three different sources that dong had been a little bit less than enthusiastic about it and i said so I got an, a two emails that day from the club saying, take that down. First one ignored. Second one, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And they went, and like they basically said, it's going to ask listers. So I was like, that's fine. I'll go to mine. Huh? I didn't, ha I didn't have one at the time, but I hmm. sorted it fairly quickly. And yeah, I got a solicitor's letter saying, take this down or else. And my solicitor's response was, we'll take else, please. No way. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was my, my solicitor's response was essentially, we'll see you in court. 
And every time I've been in legal trouble with uh, in that sort of situation, which has been a few. I was going to say, how many? I, if you had to put a number on it, I'm how many times? Seven. I'm seven and I. Seven and I. I always, to... always through the club or from BSH as well? Uh, from BSH and the club. Uh, well, I don't think any of it's actually come from the club. I think it's from like, so that was Dong. Hmm. And yeah, the <laughs> solicitors were like, go on then. Uh, there was Panu and the solicitors were like, go on then. And with Panu, I said to the solicitors, would you mind if I published it? And it's like, yeah, of course, do it. You know, it's even funnier. Just do it. <laughs> Because, you know, when you're in the right, and with the Donald thing, he kind of, in his letter from the solicitors, he admitted saying it, but said, I was only joking. That's not a defence. Hmm. That's, that's not, which is why my solicitors laughed and went, yeah, go on then. We'll take else. So, I've got questions from me, and, and they're less about the deal and less about the future because we've had enough of those from other people. They're more about you, Dan, to be honest. Um, oh, God. <laughs> Nine the... inches. <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. My mum might be watching this. That was a joke. <laughs> I've seen it. It's bigger than that. Um, <laughs> it has to be take on half of a... I can't say it because I'll get into to defamation issues. Um, anyway... <laughs> So the, the whole history of me and you, Dan, our, our first interaction was um, when I was writing for another blues blog and they were plagiarising you left, right and centre. Uh, and we had a bit of a to-do in the DMs. I don't know if you remember me trying to defend the indefensible. Um, that that was kind of my, my first interaction with you. Um, and then obviously time's gone on and I feel like we've got, got to know each other over this time. Um and it, it seems to me like you've come out of your shell a bit over the last eight episodes. Would you say that's fair? Um, yeah, kind of. Like I'm, I'm a very private, introspective person, um, and I know I come across as a bit of a dick, and I, I apologise that because I do. I am somewhat condescending, somewhat patronising, mm. but it's kind of a defence mechanism because um, I'm a very socially anxious person, and so like half the time it's me getting a barbie before the other person. Mm. me so you know see one, what it is. one of the i think it was either the first or second episode of this i asked you questions like that which were not meant as an a attack on you personally or anything but they were uh criticisms you, you may have received about the way you can be online um i think or I, i'd like to think that over these eight episodes it's become clear why some people get sarcastic answers um, and why some people get, as you say, the barbs before the barbs are thrown. Um, some of the, the shit that gets thrown your way, I do think it's only fair that some shit gets thrown back sometimes. Um, You've got to understand as well, I'm human. You know, like, there are times people have messaged me, like, and I'm in the pub or, I, I, you know, I'm doing something else and they've asked me a stupid question. And ask a stupid question, sometimes you're just going to get a dumb answer. Hmm. You know, if you ask me something dumb and I'm in the I'm in the pub and I'm feeling like I've had a couple, then yeah, I might I might respond with something a bit um, that I shouldn't do. And I'm sorry. Like often I'll say to people, like now's not a good time. Mm. Um, some people push it, some people don't. Uh, yeah, you know, there, there's been like a bit of stick on Twitter, and some of it, some of it's probably deserved. Some of it might not be. There's some people I think are a little bit jealous. Although why the hell would you be jealous of me? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just the internet, and it? it's just the way it is. You know, we're we're in a we live in a world where anyone can find out anything if they do the research, as it were. And some people's methods of research are different to others. You know, it's it's just one thing. Do you ever regret getting involved with all this? Um, there are days I regret getting up in the morning. So of course I do. <laughs> That's the spirit, mate. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like do I, do I do I regret getting involved? I've been to Hong Kong eight times. I've been to Macau. I've been to China twice. I've been to Cambodia. No, I don't regret it. You know, I, I I've I've um I've done quite well out of it. To be fair, um, I've been quite lucky in the things I've been able to see, been able to do, and I feel although. I will be honest, I Monday night I was overwhelmed. Like it, it was so many people I like, I could have had a thousand points on Monday and I still would have been offered more. And it it's it's gratifying and humbling, but I came home and I hid in the corner because it was just overwhelming. It's mm -hmm. like I'm not I'm not the the person people think I am. I'm not this 
I'm not this amazing guy. Like I'm standing on the shoulder of giants. You know, there are so many people who've helped me, so many people who have either supported me or given me encouragement or have helped me to improve the way I write, the way I do things. Even people who have kept me on the straight and narrow, like kept my moral compass straight. You know, without any of them, I'd, I'd have been fucked. I would never have been able to have done this, so, to have done anything that I've done. So I feel like a fraud sometimes. Cause it's like, yeah, it's not just me. It's not just me. And I think that's why I kind of get wound up sometimes when people like, there, there are some people out there who are actively trying to like go, it was us. And it's like, mm. well, no, it was, it was a lot of people. Mm. And most people, uh, there are some, I, I'll tell you now, one person in particular who will never find out their name because they don't want it out there. Without that one person, I don't believe this would have happened. Um, without their their work, their diligence, and their money, because they put their money where their mouth was. And I'm not talking about giving me money. I'm talking about they paid for things that made this happen. Mm. Without that person, this would not have happened. And I hope to God that they are rec- the, the people who have bought it will know about it and will somehow rec- uh, recompense them for that. I really do, because they deserve it. Mm. Um, there are a couple of people out there who will know I'm to- who I'm talking about, but most won't. Um, and it's those kind of people, those like those kind of um, they, they they don't want publicity. They they're kind of like stand in the shadows. They they they're happy for me to take all the credit because it means they they don't have to stand in public. And I'm I'm indebted to them, like massively indebted to them. Is there anyone you can name that you'd like to thank or uh, point out? Anyone in, in that stands out as? The trouble is there's so many people, but mm. um, in particular right now, I would say two people. So Colin Tatum, mm-hmm. who I know is in everyone's cup of tea and has had a rough time of it the last few years. Mm. When I first started out, he was um, he was really he was there for me. He talked to me a lot, he told me a lot, he he kind of helped to he Tats is a very old school journalist mm. and He's. A, I, I really appreciate his old school values. I know he watches this. I know he doesn't like me swearing either. So sorry, sorry, Mister Tatton. You know, I got to the that. rest of it then when I swear all the way through. <laughs> but yeah, with, without him to begin with, and then Brian Dick, who is not only an amazing writer, not only an amazing interviewer, but he's the um, he's the straightest person I know. In fact, in the terms of like his moral compass is so strong. Mm. But I'm. I'm I'm a bit of an anarchist at times, and I, I'm a bit reckless. And he's the one who's reining me back. He's the one who's saying, "No, you, you can't do this. You can't. You know, do you really want to do that?" And he's always, always right, always right in that sort of situation. And um, without him, and I know Brian. I know that he will be cringing right now because he doesn't take compliments easily either. Um, and I know that when he um, moved from his job reporting with the Blues, he got overwhelmed by all the people saying really nice things about him, but he deserved them. Yeah, yeah. And he deserves the credit here. Sorry, Brian, but you do. Um, and I'd, I'd be lost without you. And yeah, raise a beer to you, guy. Is there any anything that you you wish you'd have done differently over the last? I mean, how many years have you been digging away at this now? Uh, so since I started off in Partizan, it's been twelve years. Jesus. Uh, yeah, yeah, twelve years. Um, do I? It's, I don't actually think so because mm. if I if the mistakes I've made help me learn and if you don't make mistakes you don't learn you learn more from your mistakes than you do from your successes absolutely and you know um i i don't think i I think maybe i'd have like toned down a little bit my social media like back in the day because i don't really use social media as much anymore Mm. um but you know it is what it is it is what it is and yeah i the only thing i'd probably change is like if we go back in time to 2016 i'd go back in time and like um, I'd fly up to Hong Kong when um, Miss, uh, Mr. King met with uh, the people from BSHL, and uh, I'd kidnap him so he wouldn't meet them. <laughs> well, yeah, you could have done that. I'll blame you forever for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, blame you, blame, blame you for not not kidnapping Mr. King when I had the opportunity. Was there ever a point where you thought this just isn't going to happen? This is my life now. Investigating this, this we are stuck. No, no, because never, never is uh, an extraordinarily long time. There was, it's like saying, like when people go, ah, oh, we'll never be sold. What? Not before the heat, the inevitable heat death of the universe. Come on. Come on. You know, it's like, 
it, it yeah it might be a while it might be shit but it's never it's not gonna be never um it really does my head when people are like that because it, it's um i mean people call me a doom monger but you know, oh it's never gonna happen it's such a victim complex like come on man yeah snap out of it so say you just, just be... say you never got oh. involved at all what's the timeline mm -hmm. for blues I have no idea. Alternate timeline. Do you, do you think, I suppose what I'm asking is how much of you plugging away has got Mr. King in this trouble? I don't know. No. I don't know because if it wasn't me, would it have been someone else? Could have been. There are plenty of people out there who do, uh, you look at like um, Ke uh, Kieran Maguire, you look at Swiss Ramble, you look at Martin Caladine. There are people out there who uh, who do football finance everywhere and report on all the problem clubs. Um, you know, which there are a lot, and some of their stuff would have would would, would have surely crossed. Uh, you got people like David Kahn at the Guardian. He used to write a lot about football finance and investigation. You've got uh, there is a, a Norwegian website called Jossima who do some really really interesting stuff, especially about betting and football right now. Um, you know, this the betting sponsors yeah. on. Um, Premier, oh my god, some of the shit there. Really? Like, if you've not heard of Justin Mile the Norwegian website, check out their stuff on Premier League um, sponsors because it is, it is scary. Yeah. Um, basically, um, it's all really iffy. Um, they use a room above a bookies in the Isle of Man, or used, I don't think they do it anymore. They use that as their UK base so that they could sponsor on shirts, but like they had no UK website and it was all shady stuff in the Far East. Incredible. Oh, just wow. incredible shit. Yeah. Yeah. Just from that. Um, obviously, we've had millions and millions of, of compliments for you. And because knowing you like I do, you're not going to want to sit there and listen to lots of people saying nice things about you. But I will read a select couple. Um, so Jimmy at Crazy Brummy 83. Not a question. Just a massive thanks to Dan for all the time and effort he's put in. And say we need weekly fat lads back uh dean rees hi bud hope things are well no question for dan this time round, but could you pass on my thanks to him for what he's done over the years absolute legend i genuinely would like to buy him a drink of his choice whenever that chance may be proper new blue nose onwards and upwards kro um nick spooner at nick spooner uh, after everything is done and the fat lady has stopped singing the book is finished and cruising to a number one bestseller you're sitting back in your favorite armchair in your k-pop onesie what's next do you have another project in mind or is there a travel destination on your bucket list i think like k-pop onesie um yes there are million travel destinations on my bucket list anyone who knows me will tell you that um all i ever want to do is just pack a bag and, and go somewhere mm. Um, I want to. I, I, one of the things I'd like to do soon is to uh, backpack across Europe while I still can. Um, you know, just like pack a bag, fly, um, book a flight into somewhere, a flight out of somewhere a week later, a thousand miles away, and then the whole holiday is getting from point one to point point two. Mm. I'd love to do something like that. Um, I've fiddled around a bit with music web. Uh, like I was going to do a music website, but to be honest with you, um, I didn't have enough oomph to do it. Mm um i don't know we'll see i'm very much very much a let's see where the dice lands kind of guy i i don't plan i just do so we'll see we'll see um but yeah um i i, I would like to travel i really would like to get away um i'd like to go back to asia for like a longer period of time get away from the rain and the you know the cold weather for a bit i don't like cold weather um yeah no we'll see we'll see Reminds me of the the Frank Turner song, I Am Disappeared, which if you haven't heard, listen to it. It's an awesome song. Uh, Mackenzie at 1875 Kens. Is it time to get the champagne out and when can we expect a Dan Ivory meet and greet? Um, champagne, hold it for the EGM. When the EGM's done, then you can break out the champagne. So around the end of June, honestly. Yes. And when the EGM's done, I will break out the champagne. Well, I will bring it break out something similar to champagne i can't really drink champagne but i will break out something a meet and greet oh, fucking hell. <laughs> That's the honestly spirit, you you'd be so <laughs> like the thing is you'd be so disappointed That's I, not true. I, like i don't know um I, I i have no idea how anything like that would work because I, why would people want to come see me like i'm, I'm not that like 
once all this is done within two years i'll be forgotten oh, and i'll shit. be quite happy for that i'll be quite happy for that you know i'd much rather blues fans are talking about a legend on the pitch who scored 30 goals and is like the best striker since francis than talking about me writing some thousand words on the internet about some dickhead in with a cambodian passport you know there's um kane styles put on twitter not long before we started this there's a roost takeover party uh sunday the 28th of may um at north bsha if you want the details on that um you going to that dan I don't know. I've not, not 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 been invited yet, so no, I don't no know. one's no one's invited. It's just an open invitation. Um, trying to pack the place out to celebrate. Um, I, like I say, I'd rather hold out for Eugene myself. But can we'll I see. drag you there, Dan? We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> you like you won't have to buy a beer all night if that helps. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I, I, I like. I'm not. I'm not joking. It, 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 after my life, I, I will repeat. On Monday, I came home. I hid in the corner for an hour because I was so overwhelmed. Um, just, I'm not. Not. Not trying to be an asshole, but social anxiety is a thing, yeah. and I very much have it. You know, um, people say to me, "Oh, you're not socially anxious." I'm like, "This is all a fucking mask." Like behind this mask, there's a little kid going, "No, no, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Bless you. Truth. Right, let's move on to the the, the serious questions, I suppose. Uh, Alex James, this one's long, at Alex J. Hurley. I have a theory. It's a bit long-winded, but stick with it. Blues are the only club in the UK and possibly Western Europe who come from a genuinely big city and carry the city's name, but perennially struggle slash underachieve like Man City used to. Gary Cook has previously spoken about how Manchester itself was as attractive to the Abu Dhabi Sheikhs as the football club was. Buying the football club was a conduit into the city and its business community, which made investing money easier. Now Cook seems to be involved with the Blues. Is it reasonable to assume the blueprint will be very similar, i.e. get an underperforming club on the cheap, get it performing, then hey presto, the business doors are open and everybody wins? Thoughts. Um, so, um, thoughts. Uh, number one, I had that tour on SHA uh, when the original thing came through. Mm. So, might have beaten you to it, might not have. But that... no, I, I'm, I'm not going to say that Gary Cook is the, the guy who's who's pushing that forwards. I personally think it would be Nighthead. From what I know, mm. Nighthead, or I think Nighthead, uh, and, and they're um, Tom Wagner's uh, open letter kind of spelt this out i think they're investing as much in the city as they are the club because i think they realize and understand that you know you can do all with like like when paul richardson talked about oh yeah we're gonna have to cut the wages that build down something reasonable fair enough you know we're gonna have to sell a player fair enough you know we're gonna have to like just cut it to his class and then we can improve whereas nightheads kind of like well actually what we should be doing is instead of cutting costs we should be increasing revenues we should be doing everything we can to bring more money in because bringing more money in means you can spend more money make it more attractive which will bring more people in and um, you create a virtual circle um Sounds so scarily that, professional that does then it does and and it's um it's a big thing to buy into i remember when i first heard about this deal and this is going back to like december um and my, my initial reaction was bloody hell they're fucking optimistic mm-hmm. uh, i thought and, and i was you know i'll happily say it to his face I think Dale is an optimist, but I've come to realise that's not a bad thing. You know, his his whole um, thing all the way through his process has been that he thinks the, the club and the city are underperforming and it could do better. And that with the right ideas, the right investment, and I suppose the, the right kind of um, action, it, that can change. And Man City is a good example of this, actually, because... I remember Man City being set in, in the third division, uh, yeah, third same. tier. Um, you know, Main Road wasn't the greatest of grounds, and they were forever in the shot um, in the shadows of Man United. And I kind of have a respect for Man City because of that. And yeah, like, yeah, you, you know, you can argue that like the Abu Dhabi regime is not great, and it's a bit sports washing and all that sort of stuff. But I've been, oh, <laughs> I've dropped my, uh, dropped my. Um, AirPod, new AirPods, still getting used to them. Um, so I, I've been to the Etihad campus, and let me tell you, it is 
freaking amazing. Not just the, not just the ground, but like all like their academy ground is better than St Andrews in some ways, which is frightening. Like I've been, I've been lucky enough to go inside where the um, uh, like the training areas and like wow. And then they've got all these other little sport. Like I was, uh, I, I was working, uh, I was working for a company we delivered to a squash tournament there, and I'm like, this is what we should be doing for Birmingham. It's like you have like a campus which isn't just for the football club, but expands out for the community as well, because that's how you get the council on board. That's how you get the Westminster Combined Authority on board. Be like, yeah, we're going to invest, but we're not just going to invest in the club. We're going to invest in everything else. And then you have some clever accountants slash lawyers who are like, oh, FFP, well, you don't count that because we invested it for this. Mm. I'd not if you've done. And there are, of course, you know, there are people who, who will say, oh, they've, they've bent the rules, but fuck it. You know, we've tried bending the rules the wrong way. Let's try bending them the right way. Is it pie in the sky for us to talk about blues in the same breath as Man City? At the moment, yes, it is. Yeah. Um, but you have to, everyone has to start somewhere. Mm. You know, um, I dread to, I dread to mention this uh, because it refers to the mob across the expressway yeah, whose name will never be invoked. But you compare their situation to when when they got bought, and believe me, they were 24, 48 hours from liquidation mm -hmm. to their situation now, and it is like a light years apart. And it's because they put yes, they put a lot of money in, but they've also they've put in stuff that's like so fucking smart, like. If they're building an academy in the city centre. Why? Because that way they can take all the city centre kids uh, uh, who are going to Blues and Albion academies and take them to theirs. Yeah. They're doing everything they can to monopolise the city. We have to strike back. We have to. And, it, and Birmingham's huge. Birmingham's got 1.1 um, million, um, 2 point something million in the metro area. Um, what was it I read? 90% um, of the country is reachable within four hours of Birmingham. Mm. That's why we should make use of that. Should be here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But why wasn't it? Because um, because we're never that good at pushing ourselves forward. That needs to change, and it's part. Of, it's part of what. Part of this is where we need to change our fans as well. It's partly what um, makes Brummies Brummies as well. We, we yeah, well, yeah. We famously don't toot our own horns. We're famously um, down to earth and bantery, perhaps self bantery, self deprecating. Um, but you, but you, you, you are right. Perhaps. Yeah, and I understand why we're that way. And it, it's fine. You know, I like the fact that we can engage in gallows humour, that we can take the piss of it. But we also, it, it's the difference between arrogance, which people would say the mob across the expressway are, mm. and maybe Manchester as a city is. Um, it's the difference between that arrogance and just like an assertive confidence that actually, no, we are great. We, we can do this. You know, we are worthy of this. And as fans, we need to get away from this. Um, the, again, referring back to that, um, to the open letter, there was talk about, you know, better communication. And one of the things that went through my head was like, great, I, you know, we have fans forums. And it's always the same old bollocks. Mm. And people deride them because they're like, oh, yeah, they're just going for a free lunch and free biscuits and nothing ever gets done. So what's going to change is instead of us moaning, go, oh, PA don't work no hot water in the toilets. We've got to start coming up with things that are positive, that are going to make things better. We've got to start being part of a positive revolution. There's people in the staff as well. Um, there's a there's a quote out there, isn't there, from Jeremy Dale, uh, of where, where he abhors mediocrity, and I love it. Because, like, we've had mediocrity for too long. I, I personally hope that, you know, Dale and Wagner or whatever have gone into the club and gone, right, Here's where it stands. Everyone's got a clean slate. We're not going to we're not going to care about the mistakes of the past because that's the past. You've all got a clean slate, but shit's going to change. Um, instead of going, oh, we ain't got the money to do that. You're going to think of what you can do, and you're going to present your ideas to us like a new job. Um, we're going to give you, I don't know, a couple of months to sort it out. But the bars can be really high, and if you can't do that, doors there. Not to scare anyone who works for the club who might watch this. Um, Jeff Crapes on Twitter, at Jeff Crapes. How safe are people in their current jobs as American businessmen don't usually tolerate failure? That's from the tea lady upwards. Yeah, the, Jeff has got it absolutely right. And that's why. And this is where I say something that's probably not going to be liked by some people, but 
fuck it, I'm not in the position, I'm not here to be liked. Um, there are people within the club who are in their positions because of who they knew, um, if you get my drift, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to what they did. And those people will be given a clean slate. And if they can step up to the mark, brilliant. But if they are the mediocrities that I fear they are, they're going to be gone. They're going to be out the fucking door. And I imagine there are a couple of people sweating right now. And I I personally hope that everyone steps up to the challenge because, no, nah, fuck it. I can do better than this. I can come up with ideas. I can be this person who's positive. I want, I want to be part of this revolution. I really hope that everyone has that attitude because that 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 is best for the club. But I also hope that, like, they go in and they say, yeah, if you can't do that, well, sorry, time to go. If you're listening, Tom and Dale, uh, hire me. I've got loads of ideas and I'll be positive because there's so many things that, that we can do to sort of just bring yeah. the atmosphere and go on. So I'll tell you something I know for a fact. Um, there's a job. lad on... No. Shit. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. I don't know that. <laughs> but, um, there's a lad on Twitter called Paul Dells. Delvini. He did a walk... Yeah, he did a walk around with um, Ian Dutton when yeah. Ian Dutton got the job. And they came up with some good stuff. Yeah. Um, him and Waza, um, uh, Waza Boxer, is it? Yeah, yeah, He's know, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so the two of them have been like actually openly saying, "Look, let's 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 get some ideas together. Let's tell them right ahead of time what we want." I have no doubts. That's the kind of shit that Jeremy Dan and Tom Wagner will be looking forward to receiving. I have no doubt they'll be loving that because. The thing is, is that fans will think of things that they won't, and some of it will be bullshit, and some of it will be a bit extravagant or a yeah. bit whingy, but there'll be nuggets of gold in there as well. I am 100% sure of that. And wouldn't it be great if, like, some of that was the long-supporting, hard-wearing fans come out with stuff and go, and they go, fuck yeah, we should do that. That's mm. great. Why didn't we think of that? I bet a lot Let's of them are it. easy wins as well. Cheap, exactly. Easy wins. Um, you know, we, we, we know the shit that's going on. We, we've we seen week in, week out, the, the crap that could be altered. You know, and there's little things like, you know, like, oh, you know, if they can't pull the points quick enough, how about they just sell bottles? How about you just have a, a bar that sells bottles? Not everyone's going to like it, but at least that bar, it's just... Yeah. You know? Like, you know those plastic ones they do? Yeah, yeah. Over, over at that place that shall not be mentioned, they have a self pour bar. Do you know that? No, I don't know that. They have a self, like like you put in your credit card, like you have to register beforehand, but basically you put your card, you put your point glass and you pour it your fucking self. No way. It's a thing. It's a thing these days. And like, yeah, okay, you know, there, there, there's got to be some sort of control so people aren't just like... Rrr, rrr, rrr. I was going to say, how many people have found? I think, I think, yeah, because they're like, there's bars like Auto Brew that do it. Mm. And it's like, well, yeah, it's great because you can't complain about them being slow because it's you who's being slow quick or slow yeah i like I, I hope that um that they'll look at you know these kind of ideas from other places and take the best ones and go yeah fuck it let's run with it let's try it it'd be and, great you know, to, to have a sort of fan meeting um as and when that's possible like you say not not every man and his dog not everyone who's queuing up for a free prawn sandwich but people like with an ounce of intelligence and genuine ideas and 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 that are going to potentially moan, but constructively, not just Definitely. have a dig for the sake I, of having I, a dig. I'd love, to, I'd love to see people like Water and, and, and Dals, you know, like getting asked, like to go and meet them and to mm. pitch their ideas. Because, you know, oh yeah, like there is, there's a bit of a joke. Oh yeah, you know, you pay us a few million, we can do. But from on a serious point of view, I think they have got something to offer. And I think there are others who have, and I really would like that to be, able to go forwards and when when it's about communication that's the kind of communication they should be asking for you know none of this like um the, the time for winding over let, mm. let's 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 fucking positive let's do it question from nish on twitter at official underscore nish what's really exciting to me is the way wagner talks about investing in the city of birmingham putting us on the map 
what do you think he means and how do you think he'll set about doing this i'm also of the belief that we need to move away from the proper blue slash typical blue slash we know what we are mentality uh, if we are ever to become a su become successful on and off the pitch this means a major reset in the thinking of the vast majority of blues fans which i think is almost as difficult as pushing the takeover through how do we go about changing this mindset which kind of comes goes into what we were just saying and john eustace said it in in his interview as well recently um yeah and he, he is spot on and, and we are the biggest culprits of our own um self-loathing um it, it doesn't help that what we've watched on the pitch for god knows how many years is dire and what we've seen going on off the pitch is even worse but we are the first ones to say we're shit Blues are shit. Oh, we should. Oh, look, we lost again. Oh, we are shit. And I, I am the worst for that. I've made a whole podcast out of that. Um, it's just it, it feels so misplaced and so arrogant and so unrealistic for us to say, "Hey, Blues are back. Hey, hey, here we go. March up the league, Premier League. Here we come." It, it just, I almost, I can't bring myself to say it as much as I know that my attitude towards the club needs to change. I don't think I think it, it doesn't have to like rotate 180 degrees mm. but we do need to get away I, I completely agree with this we do need to get away from that like I you go on Facebook groups which like for the faint of heart don't do it honestly do it is, and like there are some good people on Facebook groups but there are also some idiots who should not be allowed access to a, a computer let alone Facebook and like you know you know the ones i'm talking about the ones are like oh, oh yeah. it never happened good stuff doesn't happen to us or or this or that or my my cousin's dog's friend's hairdresser said fuck, fuck, fuck. and then like like even now you've got people going oh yeah we need to we need to get rid of all the players they're all shit we need to spend a fortune get a new manager it's like come on yeah okay be positive but also let's have an ounce of realism um because you know i saw one guy say let's go out and get graham potter i was like let me know your dealer i want an ounce of what you're smoking because it sounds like it's good shit <laughs> yeah i know it's uh, i must admit the last well since monday so this week i've been saying hey you never know hey who knows what's going to happen in the future so that that's my version of a positive outlook instead of going mm -hmm. nah it's going to fall apart i've gone it might not fall apart. <laughs> but it's a start, isn't it? Yeah. But, it is but that's a start. start. That's a start. And I'm I'm not expecting people to turn 180 degrees because that's 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 not realistic of me. Hmm. But like, let, let's just like start. You know, let's start being like, okay, so preseason could be in Alicante. Hmm. Um, wouldn't it wouldn't it be great if like it was all done, like the EGM was done by by the by this like trip to Spain or Portugal or whatever. And the hardcore fans are like joined by uh by Tom Wagner sticking a thousand euros behind a bar and all the sangria on top. Imagine that. Lots of Imagine people would that not come home. <laughs> I'm not I'm not suggesting for a second it's going to happen, but can you imagine? It, like right. that's uh, like could you imagine like um you know, it's all gone through and all of a sudden we become an attractive proposition mm -hmm. to come to it's not like like I, I'm sure some players look at blues and go, "Fuck it yeah, now," yeah. like ground's falling down, training ground's been on fire. Um, you know the, the fans are unhappy. They're playing the, the half empty. You know it's, this going to be a, that's going to be a tough, mm. tough game. And I, I think that does put people off. I mean, like I know that when players come, like they they get infected by the bug. Like look at Sanderson. you look at the way. Yeah, look at Sanderson who turned down a, a move to Rangers mm -hmm. in January because he wanted to stay at Blues. You know, you know where your bread spotted, lad. Yeah. Um you nice. look at you look look at look at Hannibal. Like mm -hmm. I I thought Hannibal really grasped it straight away. Yeah. Definitely. Like and he grasped and he grasped that, you know, like he was a yeah, yeah, he's a shit house, but like people loved him being a mm -hmm. shit house. It's like, oh mate, I have got people behind me. I'm gonna I'm gonna shit house for them, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna wind people up for them, I'm gonna Gee up the crowd because you know this is great. I can feed off this. I I think it's a lot of what this summer is going to be about is going to be selling to players and uh, free transfers, loans, whatever. So look, yeah, it's been shit. It has been shit. No denying it. But things are changing. Things are going to get better. And I don't just mean like money. I mean like we're going to have good training facilities. We're going to have like we're going to look after you. We're going to have like we're going to invest in 
like making sure you're eating the best food that you're injured like because look at injuries this season for example i saw that thing about sports science and i was like well about fucking time yeah that, that one... really stood out to me that did because so i i don't i don't think people have realized how many like it's not just mm. the first thing the under 21s has been obliterated by injuries have we and... ever had anyone in charge that has said we're really going to focus on sports science um, I remember Don brought in a, a couple of Spaniards. Do you remember them? Yeah. Albert, uh, but they were crap. Not a good and, that did, didn't it? Yeah. So in that Don box were their CVs. Funnily enough. There you go. Funnily enough, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's like I, I don't. I, I thought that might have been like a half-assed attempt. Like you, you bring in a couple of people, but that's all. Like you don't give them any budget or anything. It's like a whole commitment, mm. and I think it's really important because I don't like the. Not just the number of injuries, but the way that we're consistently the same. Like there are so many back injuries in the in the under twenty ones. It's frightening, frightening, um, and they, they've all happened the same sort of way, same sort of place. Mm. And you know, like yes, the under twenty ones got smashed ten one. Um, was it last night or uh, two nights ago? Yeah, two uh, nights ago. Yeah, yeah, two nights ago when this is released. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, ten one is a horrific score. I'm not making excuses, but there was so you had Mitch Roberts playing in defence and Kiki Simmons playing uh, up front. I believe both of them are going to be released, so they didn't give a shit. Yeah, which is unprofessional, but they didn't give a shit. Uh, you had two trialists, um, both of whom I'm fairly sure weren't good enough in the first place, but they're playing because there's no one else. Mm. Um, you had a lad came off the bench, Ifioni, and another one came off the bench, Cameron U Eubank. Both have played for the under 18s the night before in uh, Peterborough, not at home till midnight, and then had to get up in the morning to get on the coach down to Swansea for this game and then play again. That's mm. a bit shit. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, uh, and obviously, it clearly got to the place because Rico Brown lost his head and got sent off in the centre. Mm. You know, it's like you do get weird results at this time of year, and some of it's because players don't give a shit because they've been released. Why, why the fuck am I here? I want to be. I want to be trialing somewhere else. Um, you get players, uh, uh, Tommy Fogarty wasn't fully fit. Why he was playing, I have no idea. Maybe they didn't have anyone else. Well, we also pillaged the youth teams for the, the senior team. Anyone of exactly. any, any real standard was swept up into the, the first team squad. So it, it's not well, yeah. surprising really. I, but... Yeah. It, it, and I, I feel, I, well, I kind of feel sorry for them. I also know that, that they all had a bollocking. Mm. Um, the morning after, um, not just and the coaches as well, and I think that it will have been um, a bit of a wake up call as well to um, Wagner and Dale. In that they'll be like the academy of twenty ones. Yeah, okay, we've had Jude come through and we've had some players come through. You know, they've done fairly well. They still need a, they still need a shake up. You know, they really do. it really does. And part of it, this is going to be really difficult to say, but part of it is because because Jude's come through. People who are at the academy now who weren't in those positions when Jude was there, like I've got to find my Jude Bellingham. Yeah. So they're concentrating on like like one player like Ramal Donovan or Trevon Sanusi. And that's great because they're both good players, but it's kind of at the detriment of everyone else. And as and like as far as I know, Sanusi's not signing a scholarship because he had his head turned by the big ones. Mm. It's like, well, all that fucking effort is completely wasted yeah, and we're gonna get nothing, nothing for it. Yeah. And yeah, like you can argue that Jude, 20, 25 plus million plus whatever else we get, you know, it's kind of like it's paid off in spades. But due to one off, you know, it's like we can't do that every time we've got someone we think is like going to be world class. Sometimes we've got to be a bit more reasonable and understand that it's a political game. You know, like it, it's it's really tough. It's it's a really really tough thing, and I think we put a lot of pressure on young players and a lot of. We, we all want to see like a team of 11 academy graduates in the first team. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. But we also, we need to understand that it's, it's not just a case of like getting them and making them good. There is like a whole thing to it. And it's a really complex thing. And the best academies have been like, you, so take them over across the expressway. They've, they've nicked the best staff from Albion. And they've nicked players from us and nicked players from the Albion. But they're still not up there because it takes time for it all to come together. And they're getting there, but it's still going to take a couple of years, and we're behind them. This is what we've got to do. You know, we've, we've, we've got to invest in the right coaches. We've got to invest in the right, um, in making the training ground as good as it can be. 
in the sports science, nutrition, all that sort of stuff. And also at the same time, we've got a we've not not so much promise players that they're going to play in the first team because if they're not good enough, they're not going to. But more promise that the opportunity will be there if they earn it. Mm. And this this so I saw a thing on BBC about aftercare, and I thought this was really important as well because like players who get released from academies, there's, there's been a spate of people like who have been really unwell, like. There was a kid who committed suicide after he, he got let out of an academy. And most, 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 most players don't make it. So I think we also have a duty of care to making sure that they get an education and that when that, if they leave and they don't get into the first team, they don't spiral into, um, you know, depression, drugs, whatever else. And, and, and that sort of thing. We, they do like, if we're going to take that much out of them when they're like at the academy, we have a duty as a club. To make sure that we don't take everything so that they're a show when they leave. We as a country have been terrible at that for 20 plus years. I remember seeing yeah. a documentary when I was a kid. I think Wes Brown was on it, I think. Um, and some Cardiff player whose name I can't remember, but they were talking about how they were just. They were at, I think they were all at United's Academy and they were just chewed up and spat out. Um, yeah. I, I know someone who is a relative of an ex player who had the world at his feet, got dropped by the academy he was at, um, became an alcoholic. Um, I think as a, a nation, we are not very good at that sort of stuff. And that, that's not necessarily a, a dig at blues, but I think these, these youth players have promised the world, particularly if you're at somewhere like Man City, where you're probably picked up in a helicopter to go to training, and then one day you're just gone. Um, it's... It's got to be hard. Yeah, and I think this is part of the thing we need to get across to players like Sanusi. Like, yeah, okay, you go to Chelsea, you get promised a shitload of money when you get a professional deal. What are you trying to do to break into the first team? Like, how many players go to like teams like Chelsea and make it at all? Because, like, it's very difficult to see a player at 18, uh, at, sorry, 15, 16, go, they're going to be amazing because people grow at different rates. You know, like, you get some tall lad who's a big, burly striker at 15 and they stop growing and like by the time they're 18 they're just like everyone else mm. you know it's 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 a real difficult thing to do um it's also a mental thing like all the players that i can think of that have done really well have done well because they've got it up here like jude, jude. Oh, we've, we've talked about this before yeah. jude how mature he is Jimmy gray very much uh, yeah. was like a very switched on kid nathan redmond's back in the day really great down to earth like like his mom was lovely lady but like she, you did not fuck with his mom yeah. michelle, michelle you don't fuck with michelle redmond and she she set him on the path she set him on the path by being that strong parent and it's it's like if you don't have um i'll, I'll give you a good example of someone who struggled it's jack Stora. now yeah, i think again. <laughs> now i i actually thought jack Stora had it like he he was uncanny He's in Gibraltar he had... or something now, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, so he um he's playing for a team called Bruno's Magpies, and he's going to be in Europe next year with them. He scored five times in eight games for them. They won the Rock Cup, oh but he had it all. But he had so much anger, so much anger, and he couldn't control it. And I think from what I've seen of him now, he looks a much happier person. Like he's grown into himself. And I wish him all the best. I wish him because I really wanted him to make it at Blues because. Him and Rowan Howe would have been the angriest strike pairing ever. <laughs> and I, I would have paid to watch it. But, you know, I, I, I am, I'm really happy for him. Really, really happy for him. Oh, look, Jeremy Dallas liked my uh, ready and waiting picture. There you go. Right. Hi, Jeremy. He hasn't liked mine. Cheers, Jeremy. Appreciate that, mate. Thanks. <laughs> don't worry about following me back, Jess. I, I, I don't mind. Uh, yeah, I remember um, Stora coming on against Wolves and me turning to the, the mother-in-law and going, oh, there's a lot of hype about him. He's supposed to be good two minutes later. Oh, no, he's been sent off. He's just headbutted someone. Fair enough. <laughs> That's the end of I it. Remember, <laughs> I remember going to the Port Vale away, friendly, And he was good. He scored. But then he got into a rock. And... Um, my 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 abiding memory so it's like, so by the touchline he's in a rock and his dad steams down to like get involved i'm like no way the <laughs> fuck's going on here? and like the ref basically is going over to the blue bench and like you know take him up before i send him up oh my god <laughs> right back to 
to the takeover. So we mentioned Gary Cook earlier and I'm very aware we didn't explain who Gary Cook is. When I say we, I mean you. So question from Dave Sherlock at Dave Sherlock 3. Is Gary Cook's association with Wagner a positive thing? Cook's track record looks decent, but I've seen some Man City detractors online. Keep up the good work, KRO. So firstly, I want to know who the hell is Gary Cook? Secondly, I want to know, is he even involved with Blues? Thirdly, I want to know, are you happy about this, Dan? Right, so who the hell is Gary Cook? He's a Blues fan. He used to work for Nike, he used to work for Man City, worked for uh, at least one of the clubs. He is a Blues fan. He was at Baines's on Monday. He was. I've seen the pictures. He was also with uh, Tom Wagner in the stands. He was. Is he a good thing for Birmingham City? No. First of all, I'm going to preface this. People have seen Gary Cook and uh, Matt Alvarez and all this, and they've gone, oh, yeah, they're going to be involved. And I think Football League World today is going to be CEO. Gary Cook is CEO of the Saudi Professional League, and I'm sure the Saudi Professional League might not be happy seeing Gary Cook, their CEO, being taken for another job. So I would not wish to say he or anyone else, um, who, apart from Tom Wagner, um, Jeremy Dale, Keith Pelley, anyone except for them, I, I, I would not say, oh, they're definitely going to have a position at the club because you don't know. You don't know what the situation is. As far as you're aware, was Stephen Knight just there as a famous Blues fan? I think Stephen's involved. Um, I bumped into him in Bainsies as well. Lovely gentleman. Mm. Um, I, I I get the impression that he's more of an ambassadorial sort of thing, yeah. but it wouldn't surprise me because, like Stephen Knight's one of these one, one of the things the you know the, the Birmingham's best sons, and him being involved, he's going to promote the city. He's going to talk about what can be done for them to invest in the city. I think he's a really per important person to be involved. So I'm I'm glad he is. Um, going back to Gary Cook, Gary Cook um, when he was at Man City. He did a good job transforming the club from like here to here, which is exactly what we want at Blues. Mm. However, um, you read about his stuff and he made a couple of PR gaffes. Said a couple of things he probably shouldn't have done. Nothing major. I think there was one where we we're talking about signing the player, right? Yeah, people in Beijing are like Richard Don doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, which is which is true, but it's not the sort of thing you should be saying about your skipper. Yeah, uh, he, he lost his job because he said something to a player's mum, I think it was, that he shouldn't have done. And they were like, nope, nope, you're gone. And they brought in Ferran Soriano, who's had the job since. Um, he's been, uh, he was involved at Wigan. Uh, he was brought in at Wigan to be 90 second director to help uh, find a buyer. They found Dr. Stanley Choi, and that went not so well. He was then involved with Chris Kirchner at Preston North End and Derby. They're, they're, like, well, his attempt to take over the boat. And when Kirchner was found out for the fraud he is, yeah, Gary Cook lost, uh, lost a lot of uh, shit in that and ended up working in Saudi. Now, if you're like an arch pessimist, you'll go, well, he's been taken in by a couple of people, you know, like the, this is not a great person, is it? I wouldn't see it that way. Um, I think we've got to be like, You've got to be careful. You've got to judge people by their actions, not by who they are. So, like Matt Southall, for example, oh, I was unhappy. Say, is he better than Matt Southall? <laughs> oh yes, because Matt Southall, it was, it wasn't him being involved with dodgy people. It was Matt Southall doing he stuff that he probably person. shouldn't have. Yeah, and I did not want him involved with Blues, and I kind of part of me feels a little bit for Matt Southall because I think Blues was his last chance at credibility. But I also don't feel sorry for him because he's an arse. Uh, I, I remember speaking to him back in the day and the bloke's an arsehole and I don't care. Um, Gary Cook, it's he, like Chris Kirchner took a lot of people in. You know, he had the money. He had the money because he was spending it like in water. Mm. The problem was he wasn't supposed to be spending it on the stuff he was spending it on. Now he's being done for wire fraud. And it's difficult when you're in that situation and you're seeing people and you can see that they've identifiably got the money. It's very difficult to be able to say, well, is that money yours? Are you really meant to be spending that on this? Like, likewise, with, with Stanley Choi, at first it was okay. He just went south when he plugged it on to um, that British Virgin Islands company and they went, nah, don't want it. So, you know, it's you have to, take, you have to kind of divorce the situations from the person. I would say that I think Gary Cook could be a good person to be involved. Because like he did transform Man City from A to B, but I would also say he's not the Messiah, 
And I think there is a danger from some Blues fans that they go, oh, Gary Cooksey, well, he was a Man City. We, we can't be like that. You know, we've got to be a bit more switched on. You know, and it, it's it's quite sad in that we're so starved of success and of, of positivity. We're latching onto any, like, chance of it. It is what it is, you know. And there are people within the club that um, I think, like, I think Craig Gardner, for example, was probably the most secure job in the club right now. Um, mm. I, yeah, I've not always seen eye to eye with uh, Craig Gardner, but the stuff that, like, in the last few months that have been going on where I would say he's been involved in trying to get this done. Can you um, divulge any of these things? Yeah, so, so Stephen Knight was telling people in Bainsies that um, Craig Gardner paid, well, no, someone told me that okay. Stephen Knight had told him in Bainsies that Craig Gardner paid for the epic training centre in Henley and Arden. Right. Like, out of his own pocket. Now, I've spoken to other people and I went, actually, knowing Craig, that's, that's kind of the kind, you know, he's not short of a few quid. Mm. I don't think it actually was like that. I think it's more a case of something needs to be done. The Chinese were dragging their, you know, the, the owners were like dragging their heels a little bit because they didn't want to spend the money. Fair enough. And he's going, look, if you don't pay for it, I fucking will. And that's shame them for doing that. And I 100% believe that's the kind of thing Craig Garden would do. Mm. So, yeah, you know, um, he's going to be involved. But, yeah, like you have to also ask yourself. So, if you've got Gary Cook in, if you've got Jeremy Dale in, where does that leave people like Ian Dutton? Where do you think it leaves them? Uh, I don't know. I like Ian. I um, hope. I, I. I think maybe it would be a case of look. You've done a good job in the interview, like like for now. But what you're really good at is marketing. So, would you mind going back to yeah, being marketing? And I don't know how Ian would take that. Um, but these are the kind of difficult things that they are going to have to happen. Like you've got, we've got an FD, um, Mark Smith. Is he a goner? Possibly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kira Gallagher, Kira Gallagher, governance manager. I'm not saying a word. Mm-hmm. Not saying a word. Um, Lundy Masibo, chief operating officer. The person who told the fans forum that the stadium was okay and was going to be open shortly yeah. two years before it was done yeah i can't remember. can't imagine they're uh long for this well yeah but they, i think i think i think some of them will have a chance to prove themselves mm. but yeah I, and the people are going to understand this when they're saying oh like gary cook's going to be old that means someone's going to lose their job and yes like you know i, I guess people are i'm going to be sentimental but you've got to be these these people are people they've got mortgages they've got lives you know and You've got to be somewhat human about it, I guess. Mm. I don't know. I had a question from Craig Monclear Gardner, at Gardner's name on Twitter. <laughs> on Twitter. There's a chance this is Craig Gardner. <laughs> How big of an impact has Craig Gardner made on trying to shift BSHL? Does he deserve more credit? And I'll add to that from me. You told me in the past there was a bid that Gardner was pushing and a bid that Dutton was pushing. Um, is this the bid Gardner was pushing or is this a completely separate third bid? The bid that Gardner was pushing was the Bassini one, Keith Harris, back in the day. Yeah. This one wasn't anything to do with it. Um, I, ca- I can't tell you for sure because I, I, I've heard mention that he's had um, that he's had some involvement in getting sold the line. I've heard mention that he's had some involvement in telling them that they've got to sell. Now, it's easy... For people to say that and without knowing without having been there i can't say for sure if it is or it isn't i'm i will admit my biases i am skept, i'm skeptical of some things because i know some things that happened in the past but i'm also aware i'm also wary that people can change and sometimes you do things because you have to because you're a survivor and because like it's the only thing to do is the shit thing to keep your job and keep things going so sometimes you do things you don't want to do. So I don't I don't want that my biases to colour the way I think about it now. I uh, so I'm, I'm aware that I have biases. I'm also aware that I'm probably not in these top one hundred people because I burned him badly yeah. over the um and I I do I regret that? No. He I thought he was bang out of order and leaking it to Blues Collective and I still think he was bang out of order and I'm quite happy to say that it was him who did it and he shouldn't have done it whatever but he's passed it's gone it's done um he's i think gardner's got the toughest stop this summer 
because yeah. we're going into a summer where we've got all these players we need. There's not there's a little bit of confusion over who's going to be funding things in the next few months. As I understand it, he's got a budget. And like BSHL have got to be prepared uh for both eventualities. So they're like they're gonna to say to him, you can spend this much on tra- wages and free transfers and whatever. So like it's not like nothing's gonna be happening, but he's also gonna sell these sell the club to these players like, yeah, it's a bit shit right now, but end of June. You know, I, I don't envy him this summer because well, it is gonna to be tough. Looking through, we got Harley Dean who by all accounts is off, Max Collin who by all accounts won't have his contract renewed. Um, unless he takes on hell of a pay cut. Uh, Austin Trust has gone back. Dion Sanderson's gone back. Uh, Bielik's gone back. Uh, Kadra's gone back. We are pretty bare bones. Troy Deeney might end up manager of Warsaw. Um, do, we've had, obviously had lots of questions on, on transfer. A lot of people asking what the transfer budget is. Um, so if you can look in your crystal ball while I look at the questions I've got in front of me. Uh, Luke Clark at Ginge underscore Luke. Do you think we'll sign Trustee Sanderson or maybe Bielik? Uh, Mike Jabari um, at Mike Jab BCFC. Um, does Dan need any stationery or print? Oh, no, that's a different question. Uh, will we be able to offer more than 25% of the asking price when we bid for players now? Uh, will we be able to look at the manager's sixth choice of transfer target and above um, as opposed to whoever we can get? Um, da, da, da. I, Go on. I just said the, the, the problem in all this is the three dreaded letters, FFP or, or as they are now, PNS. Right, um, so... Before you go off on a tangent about that, if I can very quickly find it, which I bet you I can't now, we had a question about that. The gist of the question was, why can teams like Chelsea come in with a new owner, and I appreciate their Premier League different rules, but they can come in and splash the cash and no one says a word. Newcastle can splash the cash, etc. Is it just that Chelsea will make all that money back in merch sales so they've got a bigger window to play in? Um, like, why can't we blow that right. transfer budget? Why doesn't it get reset with new owners? Is it because... Hey. It's the club, it doesn't, not the owners. Okay, so number one, it doesn't get set for Chel- reset for Chelsea or Newcastle. Newcastle have actually come out and said that they can't really go overboard this summer because they can't. Right. Chelsea played the rules like a fiddle. Mm. Um, no pun intended. So why can they spend loads of money? Because they make a fuckload of money. Is, is we that don't. literally it? They, they make that back yeah. in shirts so, like yeah, yeah. merch. Well, yeah. Yeah. Shirt sales were like sponsorships, mm. ticket sales, broadcast revenue. Blues made eight uh, took in in revenue £18 million last year. I think the bottom club in the Premier League gets five times that in broadcast revenue. Mm. So, you know, it's like comparing apples with orchards. You know? Um... Also, uh, as I say, Chelsea, yeah. Chelsea played the rules. So, for example, they signed Mihailo Modric for £88 million on an eight-year contract, mm. which means they could spread his fee over eight years uh, instead of, like... okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, they, you know, they, they gave Enzo Fernandez an eight-year contract. That's all been stuck. We can't give them five now because of, they played the rules mm. uh, like that. Uh, Newcastle didn't... They, they spent... A bit, but they, they didn't, didn't spend a huge. Yeah, they didn't spend like hundreds and hundreds of millions, did they? They're and and yeah, and Newcastle have said that that you know people have suggested they're going to sign Neymar this summer. Like, no, we're not, because we can't. And I think Newcastle, um, and it pains me to say this, because I you know I'm, I dislike their ownership model intensely. Yes, but New, Newcastle have been quite sensible, and like Eddie Howe has been like getting tunes out of players that I never thought was possible. And that's what it comes down to, really. It's like people, people go, oh, we need to sign a 20, uh, 20 goal season strike. Or so does every other team. They're like rotten or shit, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It's not, people need to get away from, we need to spend loads of money. We need to recruit smartly. Um, obviously, it's not going to happen now, but um, Rio Admaros was signed by Leicester when they're in the championship for £450,000. Mm. You know, it's doable. You've got to have really good really really good um recruitment and you're up against everyone else who's looking for the same thing as well making it doubly hard we're not gonna be able to spend money this summer because the club has consistently made big fat losses and we've made big fat losses because a certain ceo massively overpaid on player wages was a bit. like you know like i reckon the agents must have come up to him and gone 
Yeah. You know, you know the meme, the, the dude behind the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, that question was from Sam H, by the way, at Sam Holton 4. Um, in, in terms of, of, of me, I'm not looking personally for Blues to break the bank next season. Uh, I'm not looking for a massively successful campaign. For me, the goal next season was the same goal this season. Stay up. 17th to 12th place. Because next season, we are going to have to cut a wage bill. We are going to have to make uh, improvements to the, the ground and whatnot. I, I want to be able to celebrate a last minute winner without the threat of the ground collapsing around my ears. I want to drive to the ground and not worry that my car's being nicked while I'm watching the football. That, that's exactly. my priorities next year. Um, I, I I don't believe I, I think the the in ground improvements aren't going to count towards PNS, so we don't have to worry about. No, no, I'm, I'm not talking. I'm it's slightly different subject. What yeah. I'm saying yeah, is, yeah, I yeah. don't care if we don't sign anyone next year as long as we've got eleven players out I, and they keep us up. I think you're in the minority in there. I think I people I expect more. Yeah, I know. I think people will expect, more, and this is why it's going to be difficult. But. I mean, uh, I saw uh, there was a description on tomorrowsalliance.com this uh, this afternoon about uh, or today about keeping Max Collar, and there were people going, "Oh, I think it's ridiculous that, that we shouldn't keep it." Like people saying we should keep him. We're losing twelve players this summer. We need to keep everyone we can. And it's like, well, a he needs to take a wage cut like seventy five percent, maybe a little bit more than that. B he's thirty two in November, and I don't care how fit he is. He's thirty two in November. He was played quite a bit last season uh, of the season that's just finished with an injury and it did affect his performances you know and i'm sorry but at the end of it he'll be worth nothing we've got to get away from like sentimentality we've got to get away from like well he's done all right he's been consistent yeah he has been consistent but we need to spend our time focused on signing a at long contract player who's 23 24 who can give us that can, at least that sort of consistency and be eight years younger you know, it's really difficult because, you know, it's about familiarity. People want things that, like, you know how we always talk about, oh, we can sign X and Y and they've either already played for us or they're known to be fans yeah. or they've been linked us in every window since the uh, dot. Yeah. It's like, no, we need to move on. We need to, and it's difficult to do that because as people rightly say, well, it's not my job to know these players. Fair enough. If you don't know, shut the fuck up. Don't yeah. say anything. How about that? You don't have to have an opinion on everything. If you don't know... Exactly. <laughs> One mouth, two ears, listen. <laughs> I tell you what, people know that I have an affection for Max Collin anyway, but at, at the awards last year, um, I went and spoke to him and he apologised for how crap, not how crap the team were, but he was like, sorry, the season wasn't what we wanted it to be. It was the most sincere apology I've ever heard in my life. And I just thought, oh, I just want to give you a little cuddle, Max. That's lovely. Him and Nico Gordon, absolute diamond characters. Just thought... Oh, I'd never expected that, but yeah. Cheers, in, Max. In, in fairness to Max, he, he has been he's been at probably one of our most consistently good players. Mm -hmm. Uh the most consistently good right back in the division according to who scored. Mm -hmm. So fair enough. Although that might say something about the, the quality of right backs yeah, in the championship. I don't know. Um but he's gonna be thirty two and he's gonna have to take one hell of a pay cut and for all I know, he might be like, I don't fucking care anymore. Like, I've earned all the money I need. Fuck this. I'm going back to France and I'm going to like grow some like wine. I'm going to make wine and I'm going to take it easy. Um, in which case, good luck to you, mate. I, I have no, um, I, I'm not, I'm not mad about that at all. No. Uh, John, John Goodrich at Chevy, Go Chevy Gonna 01. I think that's place. Uh, pronounced. Uh, do you think the board will give John Eustace a chance and has Pew cracked open the big champagne yet? Uh, yes, I think Pew is currently drinking himself into a coma. Um, but John Eustace, Dan. Do yeah, he'll, he'll, him? yeah, he'll still be there. Yeah, he'll still be there because he's earned it. He's earned the opportunity for. I think so yeah. You know, I, I think, I think it'll be the same as what I said about like going to the staff. Like, well, look, you know, last year was tough and all that, and. There's been excuses because you did weren't given the money, but this year you'll be given the chance. You'll have the full preseason that you didn't have last year. Have more input into the players, and you know what? Time for mediocrity is over. You're going to have to like push up, push on the next level. And the difference between a good manager and a great manager: a good manager can organise a team, can get them playing fairly consistently, 
in one for you know like one kind of formation one kind of style might break down if that 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 formational style is not uh, nullified but you know generally six out of ten every time you know um and then you get great managers who can take the parts and make them into something that's bigger mm. and who can turn good players and get a tune out of them and make them great and those kind of managers are like Ruffin and Horseshit. Now, I don't know if Eustace is a good manager or a very good manager. He's going to have to prove and he's not just an average run of the mill. Well, I can get him playing 4 2, uh, four, two 3 1 and get him playing, you know, this. I can, we can play this kind of football, but if they give us the ball, we're fucked because we don't know what to do with it when we've got the ball. It's like, kind of like Gary Rowett, um, who. <laughs> I was so happy Millwall didn't finish in top six. Uh-huh. Sorry. But it's like, it, it kind of proved the point for me. Like, Gary Rowett organised the team well. Doesn't need a lot, massive amount of money. Can find some good players because he's done that with Millwall. But the very last hurdle, once again, he choked. Mm. And it's like, I think he's destined to finish seventh for the rest of his life. <laughs> and I feel kind of feel sorry for him. It's like, you, you can get that far, but no further. But, mate, mate, you know, there, there, there's a career in being able to get clubs into that sort of position. So, you know, fair play to him. Um, yeah, but I still think it's funny. I think uh, if Eustace can get Bakuna performing consistently, um, that's a difference between a good manager and a great manager. Because Bakuna on his day is the best player on the pitch, but he's a bit hot and cold at times. Um, Chung is well, a fantastic that... player. If you can get him on the same hymn sheet as Bakuna, both singing at the same time... Like, Build the team around them. Well, the, the sole reason we've got Bakuna is because at Huddersfield and at Rangers, it was very hot and cold. Yeah, and like they were like, he's not, he's not, he's not quite good enough because he's not consistent. And that's why we got him for very, like basically nothing, and that's why he's playing for us because he's inconsistent and he's going to have to step up too. And I hope again, I hope he does because like, on his day, he's he's fantastic. Yeah, he is, and he gets it. He gets it. You know, like I, I'd like to see Chong make it in the same way. I want to see, you know, some of the younger players in the team, like Alfie Chang. I think has come on leaps and bounds this year. George Hall, if he, if his agent sort of like um, sorts his sorts himself out and like sorts out a deal, but you know, I'd like to see him push on. But it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. And part of me, part of me thinks about sentimentality. It's like, yeah, Max Klein's done great for us, but we've got to move on from that. Mm. Same with Harley Dean. I, Harley Dean is a bit of a character that sometimes like invites stick onto himself, but I think also is a good defender. And but he's been so injured in the last eighteen months. We can't we we can't afford to like even if we took a pay cut. I don't think he'd be a great player to sign, you know, because he's he's consistently struggled with injury. Mm. Um, like his calves, I think it was that he's like he was both of them. Like when he was at Sheffield Wednesday last year. He struggled with it as well. And then you've got like players like Gary Gardner. What, what the fuck are we going to do there? How many games has he played this season? I don't think he has, has he? Uh, so I think it's eight. Might be less. I'd be surprised if it's even that. Yeah. And he's got persistent back injuries, hasn't he? Yeah. Hang on. Let me, let me look. Gary Gardner. Go on. You look. Um, what? He's, got, he's got a year left on his deal, hasn't he? Mm. So it's like... He's, he's got a year left in his deal. He's 31 in June, around the time of the actual, uh, uh, what's it, of the um, EGM. And this season, he has played uh, 10 times, eight in the league, two in the uh, um, two in the cup. I'm honest, yeah. though, I'm surprised he's played that, played that many. I didn't think I'd seen him that much. Uh, yeah, season. I don't I, I don't think he started that many no, of them. Definitely not. Because uh, he kind of got rushed back, didn't he? And then he got injured again. So he started against Norwich. We lost that one. Played against Blackburn both um, in the original and in the uh, the replay. Um, started against Swansea away, the 4-3 game. Um, came on as a sub against the Albion. I think I remember that as well. Came on as a sub against Cardiff. Uh, came on as a sub against Huddersfield. Yeah, came on as a sub against Norwich and the Luton game as well. Didn't he? He started that one, didn't he? So we started. But the Luton, we started, you know, a few, but he hasn't played since February. No. And, you know, it's like, he like there's been no talk of what's happened to him. Is there? There's been no, like, oh, you know, he's, he's slowly come back to fitness. 
The last one I remember is like, oh, he's, he's pretty bad, you know, he's, he's going to maybe have to get to see a specialist or something, you know, it's like a back injury. And I don't know. Um, how much are we paying him a week? Quite a bit. Mm. Quite a bit. And like, mm, that's going to be a tough one. Hogan as well. Scott, Scotty Hogan's got another year. Um, I, I and, wish he uh, wasn't so hot and cold as well. Score a hat streaky. against the baggies and then disappear. Streaky and then a packet of bacon. Nice. Um, Didn't he have like a, an eight-goal scoring streak or something last season? Yeah, he scored. I think he scored yeah. nine before the world, nine nine goals before the World Cup mm. break, and then one after. Yeah. But and and um, there was an interview with him, and he's very much a confidence player. Oh, very 100%. much a confidence player. Biggest confidence and, player we got. Uh, he's he's our he's our Ben White, I think, mm. in fairness as well. But you know. Um, I mean, forward, uh, forward's going to be, be interesting because he's in contract, Duke's in contract, uh, Cosgrove's coming back because Plymouth, A, can't afford him, and B, don't want him. <laughs> um, and then I don't think De- I don't think Deeney's going to stick around, personally. I don't think he's going to stick around. I, do you know what? If I was Deeney, I wouldn't stick around. That that guy, say what you want about him, about how he's performed, um but the guy can't do a TV interview without someone having a go at him for not being on the training ground at 10 o'clock that night. Like, yeah. every single thing the bloke does gets analysed and criticised. No wonder he said he never wants to play with us. He should have stuck to it. I'm glad he's here, but my God, I bet he thinks, why did I bother with this? Took a pay cut to come here, just get slagged off for living a life. That's my he does have his own personal videographer, though. So what? <laughs> he does have his own personal That's, video, so which do I think I. is quite funny. I, mate, if I could, you know, I would as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you've got a God complex. <laughs> Me and Troy, God complex together. Um, question, I'll, I'll run these two together. So Chris Mullins at CB Mullins 83 Do you think we would ever sell the stadium naming rights to get some much-needed revenue? Also, if Jude stays at Dortmund, does that fuck all our transfer plans out the window? RJC at R underscore J underscore Carter. Is there a possibility the new owners might look at taking up some creative sponsorship deals with companies owned by Knighthead in order to help us with PNS rules like Man City do with Etihad, for example? Right. So, um, with regards to selling the naming rights to the stadium, why not? Um, How does that play into the... financial fair play? Well, I'm going to come to that, but I was okay. going to say, I saw I think I saw somewhere online, like, uh, the Hurt Stadium. Mm. <laughs> it would be true, yeah. <laughs> that sums us up. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> all sponsorship deals have to have what's called fair market value, which is agreed by the EFL. So, for instance, when St. Andrews was sponsored by Trillion Trophy, which uh, Asia, which was a fucking joke uh, because they didn't do anything, uh, there had to be like a, a fair market value for it. And the reason for that is because clubs like Man City took the piss and have continued to take the piss because they have big lawyers. Yeah. So, yeah, we could do creative sponsorships. And I think that's something that the whole working with sponsors thing is something they're going to have to work on, like to bring in extra money. But it will have to be at fair market value. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, do I care if they name the stadium? Psh, no, because I won't ever use it myself, yeah. you know. Spot on. Exactly. It's like, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Like, who calls um, St. James' Park Sports Direct Stadium? Yeah, not at all. Exactly. So, there's that. Um, what was the other half of the question? The uh, the, so, the... there's a question about Jude going to if he stays at Dortmund does that ruin oh, all transfer plans we've got I don't know if it ruins all transfer plans but it will make things difficult will it um, well yeah if you think about it so um, the last two years uh, so last season uh, I think like 21-22 the one that's just gone 22-23 we'll have lost 25 million a season mm. ish um, so this season coming Actually, I, no, sorry, that's right. We lost 25 million this year. The year before that, we had we sold Jude. So although we would have lost 25 million, we only actually lost, I think, five. So this year, we I, I worked out, um, I can't remember how it works out, but I worked out we, we've got four million to play with. Um, read, read, it, read it on net because I can't remember what I wrote, but four million. Uh, four million lost we can make this show. Now, obviously, we can probably play some tricks and get that up a bit, but yeah, without... 15% of Jude's transfer, Jude's transfer fee. Although, so 
people talk about Che Adams. I've forgotten about Che Adams. So Che Adams, um, Southampton are down. Uh, he's their top scorer this season with 10, although five, only five in the league. So I'm going to come in for him. Hmm. We have a sell-on clause with him. Do you think they'll come in for him? I don't know, but hmm. it's possible. Um, I know that it's been reported by the Birmingham Mail that he's, the sell-on clause is 10% profit. Without wanting to cast dispersions on them, I have written evidence that it's actually 15% of profit. Can we clear up the Jude profit percentage yeah, it's, as well? It's 15. It's 15. Good, because I am sick of telling people it's 15 Sick of arguing of it. There we go. Yes, I know that the Athletic said it's more than five. They would have said 15, so I told them, but they couldn't use... Uh, I, I I couldn't give them the written evidence to prove it because I, I can't share it. Hmm. Um, yeah. Um, and I know there was a report saying that it was only 5%, but that was based on a flawed methodology, which is the um, solidarity payment, which actually would have only been three which shows you how much fucking um, attention they paid to that. They basically looked up a figure and just went, yeah, it's 5%, not realising that's actually made up of various things we've only got three. So it is 15. Uh, che Adams is also 15, 15%, uh, 15% of profit. And yes, we sold Che Adams for 15 million. But, and this is probably the case in the um, due transfer as well, there were contingency payments as well. Che Adams, like... Uh, for the number of games he played, making his international debut. I don't know if Scotland counts, but he might have done. So I think it's going to be 18 million. It's going to be set. It's going to be the figure it has to be above. Jude, obviously, we sold him for, I think it's 25, but there have been contingency payments there, like making his international debut and shit. So it's going to be not 15% above 25, but 15% above a little bit above 25. So, you know, always these figures are never like actual. Like, you can't be 100% reliable on them. You've got to understand there are things we don't know. Uh, they're good for rough figures, but, you know, it's not like, oh, we're definitely getting this exact amount. No, it's like about that amount. So, like, if it's reported Jude goes for 130 million, um, I, would, I would say we'd get about 15 million because mm. about 30, 130 minus 30 is 100, 15% of 100 is 15. How Excuse much me? of that do you think would go to transfers and how much to keeping the lights on? Um, all of it would go towards keeping the lights on. So even with that windfall, that's not buying yeah. us a team next season? Right. So we are going to lose £25 million this year. We are going to lose £25 million next year unless we really seriously amp up what we bring in. People will go, oh yeah, we'll save it some wages. Yeah, maybe a million, maybe a couple. Not nearly enough. You know, people need to get... It's not... It's not all this net spend stuff is bollocks. It really is bollocks. Um, because player wages fuck things up so much. And I'm not joking. Yes, uh, people go, oh, we'll get siphoned out of the club. No, it will not. It will not. And, and the original did not. The, the, the only place it will go is the only place where it ever went, player wages. Mm. You know, it's it's like don't worry about like oh yeah, if we sell, if they sell him, will we get a bigger transfer budget? Don't think of it that way. Think of it as if we sell him, can we have like the wage budget we need to be able to bring players in? Because you bring in a free transfer on ten grand a week, that's half a million pounds a year. You know, and that's half a million of loss. So don't look at it as like oh yeah, if we if, if we get fifteen million from Jude, will we get fifteen million transfer? We have 15 million towards the wage budget, which is good because that'll pay off at least half of it, if not three quarters, maybe more. Think of it that way. And think of it as, well, if we've got like a similar wage budget to we have this year and we've lost some big earning players, we can replace those players. We can replace that wages and maybe spread it out a little bit mm. and we'll be all right. No, so I'm not, I'm not trying to say that, you know, people, there seems to be some people who think we're either flush or fucked mm. not knowing that there's a middle ground and the middle ground is massive we won't be flush but if i think even if you if you doesn't go they'll have to do something and i'll have to figure something out but i'm fairly sure he will it looks like he's going to run trade or like yeah yeah so we we'll, we'll be okay 
we won't be flush, but we'll be okay. Um, yeah, PNS will be a bit tricky, but that's why you pay really fucking expensive accounts. Mm. So what you're saying is we all need to rush out and buy those retro blue shirts for 50 quid, mm. even though I got mine for like 25 a few years ago, to help fund the club. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The more merch we buy, the easier it gets. Is that what you're saying? Well, well think about it this way. Like, um, if they can, like people moan about sponsorship deals, but if we can get an official turmeric supplier who's willing to pay us £100,000 a year, let's do that. Season tickets are going to come out soon. I have no doubt they're going to go up in price, and it's going to suck because everything's going up in price, but the club needs some money. I wonder if mm. they'll keep them the same as a, here you go, this is for the fans, have your club back. No, I, 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 I would bank on them going up. I would like They're, they're actually really cheap at the moment. <clears throat> oh, yeah, um, they are. They've been really cheap for a long sort of time. They need to bring in a bit of extra revenue. If they put up, <clears throat> if they made, say, £50 on 15,000 ticket season, t- 15,000 season tickets extra, that's three quarters of a million. That's 5% of our revenues increased. Mm. You know? And yeah, £50 a lot, but it's only £2 extra a game. It's, it's... Inflation's a thing. You know, everything's going up in price. It sucks, but it's also going up for the club. And they're going to have to do it. And I, 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 I'm I, sorry because I know it sucks, but we're, all, we're going to have to swallow it. We're just going to have to swallow it because we, you know, we want someone to put in like 50 million to the club to pay for the next, next like big thing. We sh- if we want people to put in huge amounts of their money into the club, we have to kind of like that. We need to put a bit in as well. So That's, how, and I've always thought like, how long are these uh, dull years going to last? Um, it, it are, are we ever going to be in a position where we say, right, FFP, profit and sustainability is not an issue this year. Let's go crazy. No, I don't think I, I, I don't think we'd ever be in that situation because we. I hope we've learned from our mistakes. Like I actually saw people on forums can go, oh, can't we just go fuck it and break the rules? It's like, yeah, remember, remind me what happened the last time yeah. we tried to do that. That only works if you get up that year and you escape it. <laughs> and it just mean work because because the way things are going, everything is unified now. Even that's not going to work anymore. Mm. We wanted the rules to get stricter. The rules are getting stricter. We have to accept that part of that is us not being able to do it either. So you know, it's the way it is the way it is. Speaking from a selfish point of view, do you think these rules are slightly too strict, considering we've had to deal with? all this ownership bullshit for so long that this glimmer of light like it, we're not allowed to take advantage of it no no i actually think um i just can't go you know I'm you sorry sorry uh yeah it's fine it's fine um i actually think they're not strict enough um for everyone uh i know people want to suspend resilience and all that sort of thing they look at man city blah 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 all that kind of crap but like what kind of industry do you have where it's acceptable to lose thirteen million pounds a year? What kind of industry do you have where it's acceptable to spend twice as much in wages as you bring in as revenue? It's just fucking ridiculous. What needs to happen, and I don't think this new TV deal is going to help, is that players need to kind of like not be take the piss, and agents need to stop taking the piss too. The time is, you know, like it's you you won't. You want to get to a situation where people are not being treated so harshly, then the game needs to reform itself. And the problem is, is turkeys don't vote for Christmas. Yeah. So we're not signing Mbappe after all. No, sorry. It's a shame. It is. I like Mbappe as well. I think he's a fantastic player. Should we lighten the mood with some jokey questions? Yeah, go on. It's about that time of the podcast. Jack at Jack BCFC underscore. How many Baines's samosas do you reckon you could each get through in one sitting? Also, cheers for the top work and the laughs you've given us this year. Baines's samosas, um, how many do you reckon? I've not eaten one, so I'm not entirely sure, but I can eat samosas like a good one. So, um, I was going to um, say, I, 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 I would, I, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm willing, um, if ever you want to do one, Mark, I'm willing to do a samosa off. I will absolutely do that. I am all so that, that. 
I, I'm already committed with another friend to do a wing off uh, um Brewdog, their the wing Wednesdays on, oh, yeah. on on so my record for bottomless wing Wednesdays twenty eight. Jesus Christ. And um that I actually stopped because I thought it was taking a piss, but <laughs> no, he, he reckons twenty eight is easy, so I'm like fuck. I have actually lost quite a bit of weight recently and I can't eat like I used to, but I might be able to stuff a few samosas in. Um, I will happily take that challenge done. Uh, talking of wings, Nathan Dowie at Nathan Dowie 23. Can we expect pucker pies to be replaced with chicken wings and pretzels now that we've got American owners? I don't think so. I um, would though. I'd, would, you, would you swap a pie for chicken wings and pretzels? No, I love a balti pie. Oh, I love I a balti know. pie. I know it's a brummy thing, but... An um, and all, I don't know, because like, having been to... Um, having been to um, so I went to the Giants, Oracle Park, where it was... 16 quid for a pint of beer and 20 for a fucking crap sandwich oh my god yeah no thank you like i you know i know i know prices are going to go up and all that but no thank you i tell you when i went to the the baseball at west ham's ground a couple of years ago um mm. red Sox against the yankees you name it food wise they had it there they even had uh, baseball themed Krispy Kreme donuts. It was like it was a fattest dream being there. Can't remember the game, but the food was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, um, I went when I went to San Jose, uh, the excitement part there to watch the um, the San Jose Giants, mm. the one of the minor league teams. Um, it was churro night, so um, obviously we had churros, but the garlic the garlic fries were amazing. Oh, it was man. so good. Yeah, I, I, I like. I think the, um, the the whole street food thing has shown that there is an appetite for like good oh, food, yeah. <laughs> and I'd like to see uh, like apparently the street food vendors love coming to St Andrews because they, they make yeah, lots of money. Like an absolute fortune as well. I'd like I'd like to see that that like I'd like to see the club get to a point where you know like you've got like um, a whole kind of ground surrounded by food because what you want ideally is you want people to come to the ground early. Mm. and spend money at the ground yeah, you know? yeah, and yes definitely. like i i get that it takes away from pubs like Bainsies, which you know are also the lifeblood of it but i think they'll always have their core though Bainsies. i think i think yeah. they'll always have that but maybe people will turn up to Bainsies slightly earlier and then go to the ground for a bit of something to eat um yeah i, I don't think it would hurt them that much and i mean i'm not a publican so i wouldn't know that for, for sure but I don't think it would. Uh, Mark Ivory at M1VRY. Uh, will we be stocking foam fingers and cheese head hats in our new mega merch superstore? I would like, maybe not the cheese head hats because, you know, fuck the Packers. Um, yeah. Unless Tom Wagner's a Packers fan, in which case, up the Packers. Um, thanks for the money. Where's Tom <laughs> Wagner from in America? Do you know? What state is he from? I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see if we can find out. Yeah, let's see, see if we can find out. Very. Tom Wagner, Nighthead. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, it didn't really say. I think he's from like New York because he was at Goldman Sachs and things yeah, like that. That's true. Uh, so, Giants, uh, Giants Jets. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'll tell you what, it, it would be nice to get some proper merch in that store. It is increasingly hard to find nice things in the blue store. Unless you want to like a stripy polo shirt. We've got thousands of them, tons of them. Um, so at the moment it's all um, it's all outsourced at the moment, isn't it? To yeah. just sport. I think one of the things they need to do is to bring that back in house when that finishes. How long have you got um, left on that? Do you know, might be a year. I'm not sure really? because it's shite. It's just bollocks. It's, it's uh, useless. I get why they did it, but like no, it, um, especially and th this is a good thing Nighthead could do as well. Elior, I'd get rid of that as well. I don't mm. think they're terrible, but I'd, it's difficult to run a. Uh, a good concession that's only open 20 times a year. I get that. Yeah. But one of the things that I think they've spoken about, one thing you said they've got to do is to make St. Andrews more than a football stadium in that it does more things, hosts more things, so it makes more money. Mm. So, like, at the moment, St. Andrews is used as a conference kind of place. Like, you'll have, like, uh, meetings and conferences there, which does bring in a bit of money. Mm. But if we are to redevelop or to move, I would like to see us where we're in a, a situation where... I don't know, concepts, uh, other kinds of things where, like, even if it's like, you, you know, you're, you're opening out to the community a little bit, just something so that you've got people buying things seven days a week, 52 a year. How does that lead into 
financial fair play can any of that be brought over or yes it's, so the, the, this is where man city like kind of like um because man city have got the Etihad campus mm. this is what works because like if you invest in women's football you can kind of write that off so they invested heavily into women's football yeah. for that reason you know you invest in the infrastructure you can kind of write that off as well i believe and i this is why they built the Etihad campus because you know and, and like and then you can brand it all because the Etihad campus and Etihad have clearly paid something for that you know you you can you, and if you've got like um buildings on site that you can rent out that are owned by the football club and it's income for the football club then yeah great it's revenue it's all about bringing that revenue in and yes it's capitalist and yes part of me is railed against it but mm. 21st century baby it's got to be done i'll tell you what jeremy dale tom wagner i will give you 50 pound a year to let me film fat lads going gold in the stadium I don't need an answer straight away. You take your time and think about it. Get in touch. Um, Pedro underscore BCFC. When can we expect new signing Austin Trusty to be flown into St. Andrews by Chinox whilst real American plays over the Tannoys? There's lots of American <laughs> joke questions in here. First of all, surely be fortunate, son. Oh, yes, it would. Definitely. But that that the problem with that is it is too... Um, synergize with Vietnam War films and our players have enough horror flashbacks of terrible seasons without bringing that back so maybe something well, a bit more fortunate time is, is about war it exactly. is about war and our players don't yeah. need to be reminded of bad times <laughs> well if you're going to fly us and trust the in on a chin up you'd have to be fortunate time kind of playing I'm really sorry it. kind of does Alex Hans at Alex Hans 07 would Dan take up a, a, a position on the board if offered uh, love the podcast. <laughs> Keep up the great work. I am singularly unqualified to be on a, a football club board. I am. Like, people say this sort of thing to me. It's like, you actually have to know what you're doing if you're on a board. Like, at the moment, we have, like, we have an interior decorator, Shane Yang Wow, uh, Shane Wang Yao. We have an ex um, Rolls Royce and cigar salesman in um, Edward. You, and then you've got two people who kind of like are, are in accountancy and that sort of thing. You know what they're doing. You need people who know what they're doing on the board. You don't need some guy who writes a website, sat in his underpants in a dark and room in King's Earth. Would you take up like an advisory role? What can I advise them on, honestly? I don't know. Like, I, 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 I feel a fraud. Um, I, I find it very difficult. And one of the reasons I find it very difficult is because I know, well, two reasons. First of all, I know I'd get like three million tons of stick from people mm. who are either jealous or otherwise on the internet, and I can't be dealing with that. Yeah. And secondly, I, I know that it would break my heart eventually, and I don't yeah. want that to happen. And that's the hardest thing. It's like part of me would be like, yeah, I'd want to do it, but then like when all the shit happens and I get blamed for it. Mm. And you, I know that would happen. I know that would happen. I, 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 to be honest with you, even without shit happening, can you imagine? Can you imagine the shite on on, on Twitter and on Facebook? Like I get enough shit as it is, and like Twitter's I just write a fucking website. Don't pay attention to it. Yeah, but it's difficult not. It, it's difficult oh, no, it not is to. Difficult. And difficult. and yeah, and a lot of it, you know, some of it is like just jealousy. Why him and not me? Yeah, like I could do that. And some of it, and some of it. Is you know people with um uh, uh, overinflated sense of uh, self importance as well, um but you know, I'd do it. I'd go on the board. I'd do it for a year because if you think Dong charging a Netflix subscription to the account is bad, you wait till I charge cocaine and hookers to the account. I would have the year of my life, and I'll probably destroy this club for for good. Well, Peter Peter Penny had a spearmint rhino gold card, didn't he? Exactly. They? That that is my hero right there. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, right, what have we got? Gary Morgan at Gary underscore Morg84. If Shelby Companies Limited is the company being used to buy blues, what was OPL? So, this is going to be tricky to say, but I think this is part of what, um, this, this is part of what being, why being ITK is a lot of bullshit. <laughs> Basically, OPL were, I believe, the company that were going to buy blues. I think there was a situation where they were going to have a consortium mm. and there was going to be three or four backers. Because, you know, there were people going, oh, it's it's a 
Fenway Group, it's Saudis, it's mm. this, it's that. And then it became Nighthead. Part of me thinks that there's a, that, that there was a situation where they had a few and then Nighthead have gone, no, nah, fuck it, we want it all. Mm. Um, so they've like, because today launched that company in April the 12th, which is well after when um, uh, OPL were like sourcing people. Mm. So that, that I, I kind of get that feeling that like, you know, that originally that they were like, they pitched to a Nighthead and went, do you want a steak? And Nighthead have gone, no, we don't want a steak. We want the fucking we'll lot. lot. Thanks for bringing it we'll to us. We'll have the whole, yeah, thanks for bringing it to us. Here's a big fat wad of cash. We'll take the fucking lot, yeah. thanks. Um, which is kind of exciting and also kind of like, whoa. But I think that that's possibly what happened. I think the fact that Jeremy Dale's still involved, like he was at Baines, he was at Club. Um, I believe Jeremy Dale will be there day to day, probably. Mm-hmm. I think that kind of should illustrate that OPL aren't at the picture. And you see, you know, you've got these OTK people saying, do you remember there was like one guy who said, oh, you know, it's all fell apart. Yes. Um, yeah. And now, now you've got people going, oh, you know, like the real story will come out, like egg will be on people's faces. It's like, no, no, yeah. no. The problem is, is that things change. And it's, it's, it's like a transfer, isn't it? Like like a football transfer, like, um, was it Hassan Gardi who came to Blues and then we didn't sign him because, like, he fucked up in training or whatever. Um, you know, you, you can have, like, I remember we signed Dwight York while he was in the Celtic boardroom about to sign for them. Mm. And we, we, we flipped the deal. Um, get, you know, things change. And this is why I hate the whole ITK thing, because you're not ITK. Truth is a shattered mirror. And people hold this tiny piece of the shattered mirror and think, oh, I've got the whole thing. Mm. When they haven't, it's like all the glass everywhere. And you've got to realize that you've only got like a small piece of the picture and there are a hundred different stories out there. Um, yeah. The whole, I, I knew this, I knew before you, I know, is so playground. It's so, well, congratulations. Like the, the stuff you've told me, but I don't tell anyone because I... You trust me not to tell anyone, and I'm never going to break that trust. And B, these things are subject to change, and I'll open myself to, up to looking like a knob when, like, the, it doesn't come come to fruition. Um, this whole I knew they were American f- like four hours before everyone else did. Well done. Do you want a medal? Mm. Clap on the, like. There's a difference between people saying, "Yeah, well, I knew this deal was happening as well," and actively influencing the the whole blue situation at the moment but that that's a whole rant for a whole other time um with the the company being shelby companies limited do we as blues fans have a a debt of gratitude to pay to stephen knight is without yep. as, as as daft as it sounds and this may seem simplistic but without peaky blinders would we be as visible to the likes of Nighthead? Yeah, I, I had a conversation with someone about this a couple of days ago. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of Peaky Blinders. I'm so, sorry, Stephen, I'm not. Cards I don't on the watch table. The... I'll explain what after. Carry on what, you, what you're saying, but yeah. I don't watch telly anyway, so my, 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 my views are immaterial. But... A friend of mine went, yeah, you might not like it, but it's still a fucking load for Birmingham. And I was like, mm, that's it. Now, I think, now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, actually, you know what? It probably has. Because I've got friends in America who watch Peaky Blinders. I sent, um, I had a photo taken with Stephen Knight at Banks's. Mm. Sent it to my friend in California. She was like, no fucking way. I was like, you know who that is? She was like, yeah, that's the guy who created Peaky Blinders. I'm like, wow, you knew that. So, and like, they're not really okay with Birmingham, but they know who that was. And they know who what Peaky Blinders is. And it's like, so... Yeah, I think Stephen Knight has had a role to play. And I'll tell you now, when I, I, I said hello to Stephen Knight, and I said to him, you're a legend, mate, because you put us on the map. You've done more for the city than most people. Because mm. he has. And I agree. I agree. It probably ha- We do have a debt to him. We do. I didn't realise. I, I, I basically don't listen to the radio. I just listen to podcasts when I'm out and about. I didn't realise how big Peaky Blinders was until hearing Americans talk about it on American podcasts. And they mm. they don't say, oh, there's this show over in England, it's called Peaky Blinders, blah, blah, blah. They're just like, you know what, you know, like I'm Peaky Blinders. And they it, they it, they talk about it like they talk of Game of Thrones. It's just known over there. 
and I didn't realise to what extent it was known until recently. My, to go off on a tangent issue with Peaky Blinders is, I wish they'd have stayed poor for longer. Once they became rich and he became like involved in politics, it kind of lost the whole street thugs trying to get to that stage thing. Um, but that's beside, besides the point. Once I let go of that, I decided, oh, actually, you know what? It is a good show after all. Um, but no, I, I think we, we do strangely owe a TV programme for some, some of what's happened recently. It'd be interesting to see if Night Evil well, looked at us without that. If, if Stephen Knight and Matt Alvarez, who's also a producer of television programmes, are connected, do you not think they've already thought of this? Yeah. Mm. So, can you imagine someone playing me? What the fuck, man? <laughs> Is Marlon Brando still alive? No, I... I um, I think uh, Nick Frost would probably be the <laughs> yeah, tough stuff I can think of. But yeah, yeah uh, the, the, the thought of that just makes you think, oh my God. I'd, uh, Brad Pitt would obviously be me, but that just kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? Well, is so, Brad so yes, Pitt ginger as well? Say so again. So is Brad Pitt ginger as well? <laughs> no, I don't know if we've in Ed Sheeran or something. Um, with Matt Alvarez, Nathan Dowie at Nathan Dowie 23. Matt Alvarez, who bought the pickleball team with Wagner, was stood next to him at St Andrews. He owns Sacramento with Ron Burkle. Could that be where Alvarez, the Alvarez investment is coming from? He's worth three billion. Um, so from what I know, um, Alvarez is not an investor. Alvarez works in Nighthead. Right. Um, I understand that Alvarez is their sports guy. Oh, okay. So I believe he will be the link between Nighthead and us. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I believe I, I understand he's their sports guy, and that kind of excites me as well. Because like, if he's already involved in, in Sacramento, uh, is Sacramento Republic, when Republic. God knows what pickleball is, um, but yeah, they, I know it's a Sacramento football team. Um, Sacramento is a really weird place as well. Like um, I've I, I've been through it. I've not been there, but. Um, it's weird in that, like, everyone can name, you know, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, the Bay Area, mm. Silicon Valley, but Sacramento is actually the capital of California. Mm. And it's kind of like, it's inland and not, not very well known, but it's got its own character. Um, and it's quite a nice place. And I'm like, this guy get us. I think this guy get us. So, I, I'm yeah, I, I'm excited. It makes me excited. Yeah, it, it does with me as well. Um, it... it... We did have a question about um, documentary. I can't find it now. Uh, someone asked if if you think that might be on the cards. Um, maybe Alvarez. Yeah, I, I, think, I think I think I think it's possible. Straight out of small lease. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, the, 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 I I kind of feel like they've missed the boat on that. Really, um, this it's possible. I, yeah, yeah. Like so, the Wrexham thing. I think it's kind of like it's going to make it much harder. And I I actually think that we owe. A debt to Rexon for the Bainsies thing. I think that was because I of Rexon. I think we do as well. I completely agree with you. But yeah, straight out of boards, like, sounds better. Actually, so. <laughs> uh, Steve Martin at Steveski83. Is this a first for Tom Wagner and Co to be investing in a sporting company? What other businesses is Nighthead Capital involved with? I'm interested to know the scale of their current slash past investments and how big or small Blues are in comparison. Uh, aside from that, I personally think the new owners are going to have a clean sweep, and I can see Eustace going. Um, so I would say, if you want to see what oh, nice. uh, Hertz is, the big one. Really? They took uh, they took Hertz who were failing, and they made them massive. And Hertz are fucking huge. Um, they they've still got a massive stake in it, and it's worth like a lot of money. So yeah, like um, they invest in that pickleball team. I have no fucking clue what pickleball is. I've heard it's a cross between like. Tennis and, and badminton, I guess tennis it's like for a, it's it's kind of like like suburban mom tennis, maybe I don't know, but it's like it's just weird. Thing. It, it, it is strange. I asked Americans and they said it's growing rapidly over there and it's great fun, but it looks very American. Yeah, bring bring back basketball as well. So oh, I love basketball. That's one of my favourite films. Yeah. I, I'd like a basketball team, thank you. Um, but yeah, going back to the question, Hertz, just look at what they did at Hertz um, and how much money they've made out of that and how big. And that should answer your question because, like, Hertz are fucking massive. Um, like, billion, billion pound company, multi-billion pound company. And they, they took it from 
it being absolutely fucked and made a big ear. Mm. And, you know, that's what they're known for. That's what Nighthead are known for. I like, so the actual, Nighthead's like a group of companies. So the bit that owns uh, Shelby is called Nighthead Annuity and Life Assurance Company is based in the Cayman Islands. Oh, God, is this going to be another... No, it's just... Villa or no, it's, 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 right, so the difference between them and, like, those... There's a paper Nighthead, trail. Uh, <laughs> well, not so much a paper trail. There's a money trail. Like, yeah. Nighthead Annuity are worth, like, I think they've got nine billion in funds. So what they do is, is they um they're basically an insurance company and an annuity company. So people pay a premium and they either get an annuity back at the end of the year or like something goes wrong, they get paid out for it. And I looked through their website; it's quite interesting. It's for rich people, and you imagine like it just means they've got a huge amount of money available to them. And I'm not saying they're going to invest it all in blues, but I'm also saying it's not like a twenty million pound a year club is going to be more than a drop in their ocean mm. it's it's kind of good so yeah it's good are we potentially or could we potentially be just another thing on their books in we will five be in years time we will be just another thing in our books but that's a good thing as well is it? because the way I, yeah it is because the way i see it working is that nighthead won't be running a state today they'll appoint someone to do it so it might be Jeremy Dale to begin with, it might be Gary Cook. They'll have their own, and, and they'll just get on with it. And all night he will do go, oh, you need 20 million. Okay, there you go. Done. Whereas at the moment, it's kind of like, it, it's, but because Blues are such a massive part of BS, BSHL, we need something from them. It's a ball ache, whereas like night mm-hmm. is going to be like, eh. didn't I give you your pocket money last week? <laughs> uh, here you go. Don't spend it all at once. Oh, don't tease me like this, Daniel. But but that's the way I have to look at it. You know, it's I'm not saying that we're gonna spend millions. Yeah. Because I can't say that. What I can say is though, is that we're not gonna go broke either. You know, there, there, there is gonna be the money there to like keep it going. We're not there should be no excuses like, oh we, we can't spend money on like um we can't spend money to do this event. We can't get the picnic benches to do uh, an outside event for the club we can't get the um patio heaters to do an outside event for the club we can't get the uh oh, we can't fix the oven in the kitchen we can't fix the deep fat fryer in the uh behind stands that should all be like gone because when don was in charge uh there was a one thousand pound limit anything over a thousand pound had to be approved by don mm. which meant he had a pile of receipts on this on his table that he took no notice of mm. And shit just went wrong and went wrong. And he like and people chatted him and he's like, Tell it someone who cares? Yeah. Whereas, whereas now it'll be, we need this. Whereas it now it'll be, oh, it'll, whereas now it'll be like, right, you're in charge of this. This is your budget. Go do it. Mm. Go do well with it. Like that delegation is really important as well. Like when you don't have any money, you have to be really careful and you have like one person who like holds all the money in and like, when Don was there, it was like not only holding all the money in, but spending it just on shit he wanted, like his private gym palace in Box 12, eh? Mm. So, um, but, with, yeah, it, with financial fair play, is that just relating to transfers? Could they spend 900 million on the stadium without affecting that at all? As I long as we don't, don't sign think, a load of superstars? I don't think that's possible. I think that will be taking the piss. Okay. I think it, you, Everything's got to be reasonable. Everything's got to be reasonable, and you've got to ha- you've got to be able to show it's reasonable. So, will they be able to spend nine hundred million on the stadium? No, but they'll be able to say, "Well, look, the stadium is falling apart. Mm. It is. We need to fix it. It costs us six million quid. So, we invest six million quid to fix it. The um, main stand hasn't been touched since nineteen God knows when. Um, we want to do this. That's reasonable. That's a reasonable. You know, we've got it quoted. We sandwich it's going to cost to do. And they'll be like, yeah, it's a reasonable expenditure. And it's it's not like um, you're not just dumping money into the club, but, you you know, that's what it's all going to be about. It's going to be reasonable and it's going to be provable. So, that, so that's it's not the like... I, I, I don't really agree with. I, I get that if you've got a fantastic stadium, you'll attract more people there, therefore you've got more money, therefore you can sign better players. So I get that may be seen as unfair, but it's not giving you a massively unfair advantage to develop the area. 
Well, no, no, but no, it's not like that. It's like, so imagine you you went along to the and you were like, look, we're, we're building the stadium. The guy is an artist, a maestro, and he's charging us 50 million quid to do it. Mm. And basically it's like half a million pounds worth of work. And like, they'd be like, look, it's half a million quid's worth of work. What you, what, where's the other 49 and a half million going? Mm. You know, it's that sort of thing where it's like, if you go along, like, so we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We've right, we, we've spoken to these sponsors. We, we've conducted some arm's length negotiation. This is how much they're going to pay for it. Uh, this is in relation to this person getting paid, this team getting this, this, this team getting that for that. And if I like, can't argue that, can't argue that, can't argue that. Yep, tick, tick, tick. Mm. That's all great. Enjoy your new stadium. You know, it's, it's, You've got to play the game, but you've got to play it in the right way. Yeah. And um, playing it the wrong way has fucked us. This is why. Do you want to know the bit most thing I'm most excited about? It's fucking professionalism. Yeah, I know. Same. Reading that open letter, the sort of mission statement, all that sort of stuff. It's fuck the money. It's it's just so professional at the moment. It's easy to say it, different to do it, but currently, it just seems so right. That 37-page announcement was professionalism in the extreme. Exactly. It's like, this is what happens when you get expensive lawyers. You go, no, you can't. No, you can't. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're doing that. We'll give you this much money. Now, fuck off. Hmm. And, like, there's no room to wiggle or anything. And I'm I, I'm on board with that. I'm really – and, like, I, I imagine – it's the same with the EFL. You know, you, you've got really good accountants, really good lawyers, and like, oh, these are the rules. Like, so we're we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. And the EFL are like, okay, and the EFL might say, well, like, like as the Premier League have done and FIFA have done with uh, the lengthy contracts, with what Chelsea did with uh, Mihail and Modric, etc. Go, okay, no more contracts over five years. Mm. But if you get in first, you get in first. Yeah. But uh, okay, so there's one like. I want to allay people's fears on the transfer front because I know that people are worried that um, we haven't got a because team. we haven't got a team and, and that because the EGM is not till the end of June that we won't be able to do anything till then. Part of all this has been um, them getting the Chinese on board to saying, "Look, we're going to do it, but it's going to take time." And the Chinese understanding that you know things can go wrong and that. If it does go wrong, they're gonna have to still fund it, they're gonna have to still do stuff. Start in March, um, the EFL makes every team like give its funding for the next twelve months. Mm. And obviously, Nighthead weren't anywhere in the picture then, so the uh, you know, BSHL will have had to have said we're gonna spend this much. And they'll be held to that. You've got to look at so I saw Morecambe got relegated from League One, they finished twenty second. They've been going through a takeover for eight months which I'm not going to comment on because I don't want to get sued. But there's a reason why it's taken eight months. Mm. The guy can't prove to the EFL he's got the money or that he's got the money cleanly. The, t- the guy, uh, the people who are selling the club haven't got any money left. Morgan have got six players. Oh, my God. I, I can't. Like, do you know how many new players, how many contracts they offered? Uh, how many new contracts they offered? Go on. None. They couldn't. Oh, my God. They've got no money to sign players, no money to... They've got six... Oh, fuck knows what they're going to do. And the EFL are now in this tricky position in that they're actually going to have to time limit how long you've got to do a takeover. Because it's like, okay, so for eight months, you've not been able to prove you've got the money. Fuck off. And say to the people who are running it, um, you, you've um, either put up or dump it into administration for your choice and lose everything. Oh, my God. But and that's not going to happen at Blues. It can't because of these guys. It cannot happen because the way they've constructed the deal. It cut like B- BSHL are backed into a corner. So like, some, all this stuff. Up. Something. So I, I know the direction you're going. So I'm going to ask the question now because someone asked it. Matt at the underscore Ferris Wheel underscore. Uh, is Dan surprised that the prospective new owners agreed to pay BSHL a bonus if Blues reach the Premier League within two years? Um, nope. And there's also, nope. someone asked a question, I can't remember who, but there is something in that deal where BSHL will get a bonus or, or um, right. SCL will pay something if the deal's yeah, yeah. done so, earlier. I'm guessing that's so, where you're going, so continue. 
So, yeah, there's two things. So, yeah, Premier League, but of course, I expect that to be in there because it has to be. Like, you know, it's like they're not going straight away and they're going to want they're going to want a bit of Premier League money. So, yeah, the SCL are going to be, have to agree. Yeah, if we go up, you're going to get a chunk of it. Nothing they can do about that. It's, you know, it's just the way it is. The payment that, so at the moment, ORI um, have this screen where if the club makes a loss in the championship, they will cover Birmingham Sports Holding 75% of it. So, Eric, like that means if the Blues loses 25 million a year, they have to pay 18.75 million to BSHL. Now, I might have got this wrong because that it wasn't really worded well. As far as I can see, SCL have to uh, have basically said we'll pay that. If it's done by June the 30th, we'll pay it. It might be that they'll only pay prorated, like, well, we were in control for a week, so we'll just pay a week of it, but we will pay a week of it. And what that does is this, is that there's no way the deal can be done before June the 22nd. And it has, to, like, this This summer money is up to June the 30th. So if you imagine, you imagine before this document came out, they had they had till June the 5th to do that, didn't they? Yeah. But Knighthead and, and, uh, and Jeremy Dow wanted it done, before the last day of the season, because they wanted that, they didn't want to go into the end of the season, like after the end of the season, people down the dumps. They wanted to do something so that people were pumped, people were excited, people were up for it. And I agree with that. Yeah. So, you know, you work hard, blah, blah, blah. But what you also do is you, you, you put a carrot in there. If you don't fuck about, if you don't um, like have any delaying tactics, we will help save OR, like we will help sort out this money and it's not for bsh this is for ori because ori are gonna have to pay it so it's like well look if you don't fuck about it, you don't delay it we'll cover that and oh look you've got some extra money that you really need hmm it's plain it's it's so clever because it's basically playing the pressure tactic so they've offered them the carrot and said look get it sorted like in the time frame we want you're going to get some money offered the stick if you don't get it sorted by the time frame we wanted, you're going to get nothing and you're going to have to buy a fucking shitload. Like you say, it's the professionalism of it. It just seems so sewn up. It, it Compared to a press conference in a car park, compared to phoning up talk sports and shouting Simon over and over again, this just seems like the real deal and I'm almost afraid to love again sort of thing, but it just, mm. it, it seems right and it seems like this is going to happen and I, i'll tell you what this will be the biggest emotional back break of my life if this falls through i think worse it than my divorce it, it's it's your divorce why am i um no it's <laughs> it's it, it, it's um it's i i you know how careful i am about this sort of thing that's what fills me with confidence dan the fact that you're positive the fact that you're saying this stuff because i've heard this from loads of people in the past people dm me every single day with little insider bits of information and 30 percent comes true and 70 percent is nonsense you don't so when you say something i trust it and when you're this positive it makes me fucking nervous <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm. It, it is literally just a case of the paperwork now. Um, I, I think people have asked, are like, we going to hear much from them? I think there'll be radio silence now until the EGM. Do you think? Because, yeah, and I think so, silence has paid off well so far. Let's oh, fucking. 100%. Let's let's trust the silence. Let's I, and like even the transfer shit. You know, they're not going to get involved in any of that. We're not going to have like selfies with players. We're not going to have. Even pronouncements about we're going to put this money in. Trust the process. I think now, like they've delivered on the um, the stuff exchange stuff. They've delivered on getting an agreement to a place where it can actually be done. All we've got to do now is we've got we've got to get the circular out. Once the circular once the circular is out, the end of um, which will be the start of June, that will be pretty much it. So I explain these things. What is a circular? What's an EGM? What right. are we waiting for? Right. Okay, so what's happened? Uh, what, uh, well, it's late Monday night, Tuesday morning. Hmm. Um, so first of all, uh, they, 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 uh, it started early Monday morning when they said we're stopping trading the shares. Now, I, I, 
there are some people like, oh, I waited up. I knew this was going to happen. I didn't wait up. I'd been out in the piss. I'd been drinking. I'd been drinking this stuff called Dragon Suit. Imagine like Monster, but 7.5% alcohol. So wasn't oh, quite boss. with it. <laughs> if you want to say that, you want to say that. I'm not going to deny it, but I was actually, <laughs> I, I, no, no. So I got home. Were you in subside? No, I was um, actually at my uh, actually at my mate's place in the Chinese okay. quarter. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, I, I'm been subsiding years and I wouldn't no, go back. No. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I got home and I saw the train. I was like, "Whoa, like it's happening!" And like, yeah, obviously, I, like even at three in the morning, I was getting loads of bloody hits. Mm-hmm. And I kind of like, yeah, calm down. Like you know, let, let's. It can't be straight away, but it's happening. Something's happening. And then like. I got a little bit of a heads up about the, the club announcement. And so apparently, because um, they were supposed to release it the same day and they didn't. And the reason they didn't was they, they I don't think they could get it all translated in time, like yes. from like from like Chinese into legal jargon or China, legal jargon to China. I'm not sure. But yeah, so they made the announcement very early in the hour, uh, very late on Monday night, early hours in the morning in Hong Kong. Um, so that was basically, we've done the deal. Um, we've now got to prepare what's called a circular, which is like a 200 page document, which is sent out to shareholders, which basically says this deal is really good. Vote for it. Right. Uh, and in that month period, 20 business days, um, they also sort out the approvals, um, that, that are required. So if our HKSC. So roll around. Um, if it's not that's not done in time after twenty business days, we will get another announcement saying circular has been delayed. It will be produced by this time, which will be bullshit. But and I have seen it happen, but I don't expect it to this time. Once once the circular goes out, it'll be like um, we are calling an EGM, an extraordinary general meeting, at this place at this time uh, to consider the following resolutions. Will we sell forty five point six four percent? Blah blah blah. Um, it'll be at some. Uh, so the last one was like in a office block in a tiny conference room. Um, so it would be like uh, 21st floor United Centre um, bet- at 10.30, it'll happen. Here's uh, like a proxy form if you can't turn up yourself. Here's, you know, all that kind of crap. And here's the letter like, and that will be like, you thought that you thought that was complicated. That will be far more complicated. Mm-hmm. It will be more detailed. Roll around to the EGM. So I went to an AGM in December. Basically, I thought, before I went, I thought it would still be like a big hall, lots of chairs, board on stage, shareholders, bit of like, you know, a bit of announcement, Q&A. No. <clears throat> so what will, what it will be is a tiny little conference room that they've rented for a couple hours. Uh, people sign in. There'll be like a couple of members of the board there. The rest will be on Zoom because who fucking goes to these things? Yeah. Uh, maybe Jeff Howe will be there, I would think. Maybe a couple of those. You'll have a couple of uncles at the back. And um, uncles is like the way they refer to older people, uncles and aunties. Right, okay. They'll have a couple of uncles at the back who've got like 20,000 chairs all stick their hands up. Any free food? No. Okay, we're fucking up. <laughs> that actually happened in December. That actually no fucking happened. <laughs> um, yeah. And it'll be like, do you vote this way? And no one will be able to say no. And it'll be like, right, approved. And then, like, it'll be all the announcements that it's done, and then you'll see all like the like the club will announce it, and then the uh, stock, uh, the uh, shareholding that's showing the club will change, and all the people. In the, yeah, that's. So, if you ask me, once we got the date of the EGM, which mm-hmm. will be around June the twenty second, June twenty third, somewhere around there, um, it'll be like in the afternoon, I would think UK time. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, in the morning UK time. So. When I went was three thirty in the afternoon, which was uh, eight thirty in the morning. So, breakfast somewhere to celebrate that day is what I think. That's yeah. when you crack open the champagne. That's when me and you go up town and get hammered at breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Happy days. I'm square, that. square peg for a for a mix uh, a mix uh, a, what a big breakfast and a yeah a load of points. Me. That'll do me, mate. Uh, Gary J. Richards at Gary J. The Gary J. Richards. Assuming the owners and directors test process is completed before the EGM convenes, does this mean that Wagner can run the club before an EGM takes place, or does he no. still have to wait to make changes even with EFL approval? So, if you read the announcement, there are four conditions precedent. 
um, stock, um, AFL approval, uh, new stock in the back tie and shareholder approval. You cannot do it until the EGM has happened. So all four of those conditions precedent have to have been fulfilled before they can do it. So no, is the answer to that question. What happens to the rest of the shares? The other 50%, 50%. Right. So when do we, this do, is, when do SCL get that? We won't know anything about that until this is done um, okay. because of the delicateness of the situation. Trust the process. Um, get through to get get through to the ETM, get through to them taking charge, let them get their feet under the table, and then we can start talking about the other 50%. So, as far as we're concerned, their lawyers are so good that the only percent that matters at the moment is the 40 odd percent that mm -hmm. gets their feet under the table. Yeah, uh, that will be in control. Yeah, once that's done, they'll have control. It says, it says in the announcement, it describes how they have control. And there's a couple of bits which people have got interested, like, so there's going to be seven people on the board and four are nominated by BSHL. They're going to sound like that control. Hmm. Nighthead are not going to spend however million, many million on this to not yeah, know what they're doing. What to do, like. Yeah. Um, the current board are going to go. No, I have no doubt. Just like, um, I think we'll see some English names. I think the BSHL nominees will be basically uh, puppets, maybe. I think they'll be just like people like just to fulfill a role. Um, I won't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be all good. Saying there that for every meeting or whatever, at least one BSHL uh, yeah, director needs to turn up. There. Yeah, to to create a quorum. Right. What's the point of that? Just is that all just for show, essentially? Just no. It's it's just, it's just again to reassure the stuff that you're saying, so that BSHL yeah. aren't slide completely out of the picture. Like that, that, that they still have that fifty-one percent, and they still get the money from it. Um, it like I said, it's a balancing act. It's confirmed. Telling the EFL, yeah, we've got financial control. Yeah, we're going to be running the club. No, BSHL aren't completely fucked. They aren't completely. Yeah. Out of, you know, they're, they're still going to get some money out of it. And that balance is really delicate and we have to it's it's difficult for me because i would rather see 100 percent done at once but this is the way it can this is the way it's going to be done they've got some really good lawyers on it they've screwed them into the floor they can't back out trust it is there a chance the hong kong stock exchange will say we're not born yesterday we know you're not really controlling the club anymore no no that's i don't think that's gonna be a, i don't believe as long as the money comes in that's all they care about as long as, as long as they've still got fifty, as long as they've still got fifty-one percent of the revenues are still on the balance sheet, they don't give a shit. Because you do have companies where they have management deals with other companies to run their stuff. It's just it's a thing. As long as you've got the money on your balance sheet, they don't give a shit who runs it. Because it doesn't matter. It's the it's the money on the balance sheet that matters to them. Andrew Skellen at N Andy Skell. Hi, Mark. I've watched all these podcasts on YouTube and thoroughly enjoyed them. My question for Dan is, does he know if any of the existing debts will be wiped out as part of the takeover? So I'm going to answer this question carefully. Go on. That 37-page document, I did not understand enough to know that they were being wiped out. Okay. However, I've been advised, and I can't say by who, I've been advised that most of them will be. They're not going to be an issue. Happy days. I'm just going to leave it there. I think we need to leave it there. We've done nearly two and a half hours. This could be the longest one we've ever done. Um, I, I, that's there were more questions, but like we'd be here till midnight if we kept asking them. Is there anything that I haven't asked or mentioned that you you wanted to go over? No, but I'm going to. I want to repeat a couple of points. Yeah, yeah. First of all, now is the t like, and this is me. We need to leave behind the the, um, the negativity and all the whole typical blues bullshit in the past, and think of all the good stuff that could happen. And if we can um, be a part of that, if there are ways that we can help to make things better, we should try and do that. And I and I believe that Nighthead and Jeremy Day and all that will 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 take that on board. You know, they want to, they've told us they want to communicate with us. We'll learn that to fucking communicate. Let's tell them what we want to make this club fucking ace. Is that too, is that too bad? No, I don't think so. 
Um, once the EGM's done, champagne. Um, I will. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think we should aim to try and do something like live or so you know, like just some sort of thing where we're like, yeah, we get like everything's done. We're getting hammered. Let's yeah, let's, let's have a party. Absolutely. All the ridiculous questions you want, like um, you know, will there ever be a, a boy train uh, that will be trained to out from a shaft or any of that? <laughs> All those kind of questions. Let's fucking do it. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Is, is this is this potentially the last? proper meeting of with the mayor that we do do you reckon i fucking hope so no no disrespect <laughs> to you but no Jim, disrespect mate, appreciate to you. That. thanks <laughs> no i don't you know what you know the way i mean it i i, I don't know i i like i get that people uh want me to be the person who, who like want me to be a conduit to them and all that sort of stuff but i want to be in a situation i don't want to be in a situation where I'm talking about, oh, it's all going to pieces again. I don't want to do that anymore. I hate, I hate it. I, I want to be in a position where it's like, so, um, this week, um, this week, uh, they've come out with these ideas. This is what I think is great. This is how I think we can do it. Uh, you know, I'd rather do that sort of thing. Hmm. You know, it, it, like there is, uh, I, I have said that I'm not going to retire just yet. Um, that I have been asked to stick around a little bit. And I'm not going to tell you who I've been asked by, but I have been asked to stick around a little bit. And I think the reason being is that they um, that it's good to. I think people are saying it's good to have like things explained, yeah. especially when you're looking to change a, a change a paradigm, change the way people are thinking. So I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to be part of the solution, as it were, as long as people want me to be. Um, but when I feel I can't do it or that I'm not wanted, I will stop. Will you still come on a normal Fat Lads episode where we talk about like porn stars and best beers and all that stuff? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, like, I'm drinking Red Stripe tonight, which um, is it much maligned, but I like it. You can be an honorary Fat Lad for life now, Mr. Ivory. I've oh. got the gut for it, so. <laughs> you said that not me right um one final thing before we go um to possibly leave on a, a bit of a down note uh, i'd like to take a moment to pay respects to claire pearson who passed away a couple of weeks ago she was the sister of mark Gaines, who was the blues fan who died of a stroke i think it was while celebrating the blues gold against huddersfield six years ago uh, claire was a fan of the podcast as are a family so from myself uh, and all the fat lads we, we're very sorry for the loss um and our our thoughts and, and prayers are with you um but other than that thank you very much everyone out there for watching and listening to fat lads going gold thank you so much for all your questions there are so so many i'm so sorry for not reading them all out but a lot of people ask similar questions so i kind of did have to pick and choose um thank you dan for joining me on this saga of i mean we must have spoken on podcast for well over what is it, eight episodes, two hours an episode, 16 hours, we must be coming up to almost a day's worth of footage at this point, um, which is, is longer than most people are willing to spend with me, so I appreciate your patience for my uh, stupid jokes and stupid questions, um, but no, thank you, I think <clears throat> I owe you a debt to the Blues fan, I think the Blues fan base owes you a debt of gratitude, um, I think the new owners owe you a debt of gratitude. I think Mr. King probably wants to uh, bury you somewhere very deep and, and yeah, never see you again. Um, but no, what you've done, going out your own way to do, regardless of whether you financed it yourself or someone else has financed it or whatever, is no mean feat. Um, and I think us as blues fans wouldn't be in this position now if it wasn't for you and you are right never's a long time and maybe eventually we would have been took over i don't doubt that eventually the antics of our owners would have caught up to them one way or another i don't doubt that but i think it's fair to say things were pushed along at a much faster pace even if it took 12 years to get to this point i'm relieved you must be over the fucking moon to get to this point I can't imagine the relief and the pride that you're feeling. Um, and I know you won't 
actually come out and say that yourself because you don't like compliments. So I'll shut up now and I'll stop embarrassing you. But no, thank you very much, Dan. Thank you for everything. Thanks for coming on, Fat Lads. Uh, thank you very much, everyone out there, for watching Fat Lads Go and Goal. We love you more than life itself. Please do like, share, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. We'll be back next week with Pew and with Cal, also known as Ziggy Cheddar, for what is essentially going to be a piss off. But thanks a lot. See you later. Sexy!